Island! Hot wings. Wow, it's SpongeBob Boys! Woo! <laughs> the worst show on the internet. I'm blowing up. You're the not ready. ready. You'll never be ready. Never ready. We're back again. It's me, uh, Gus Zagarella, and I'm joined by my two friends here. Alexis Bristow? <laughs> Oh, no. I thought he was going to introduce us. Oh, and Henry no! <laughs> Off to a great start. <laughs> oh, shit. Jeez. Do you want to start it, this one again? We haven't or are even we started rolling? drinking yet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, take it away, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> the usual crew is here. We are going to uh, go through six episodes of spongebob picked by a random number generator except me again <laughs> oh yes yours were um well do you want to explain how we got yours lexi y'all did the random number generator thing again i decided i was gonna uh break convention again what i did last time take um stories from two completely different episodes so i figured you know to, just to round things out i would just take the second stories from each of those episodes and do it here also so Finishing Got what it. we started. <laughs> yes. Finally putting the ghost of Nick Withers to rest. <laughs> exactly. The other half of the Nick Withers episodes. Yes. Like the sister Before... episodes to like the other side of the coin to his like strange reality. Before we begin, can we say uh, what beverages we're imbibing in? Ah, yes. <laughs> I brought something special this time. So I've got a, uh, a cold uh, in a nice cool glass bottle. Here's a bit of ASMR for you. Um, a nice. Starbucks Frappuccino for energy. How's that clicking? And for <laughs> for inebriation, I've got a Rattler Original, <laughs> which is a rattlesnake branded six uh, percent apple cider. Ooh. So I'm doing sort of like a DIY like cheapo four loco here, a bougie four loco. Interesting. <laughs> and See, I um... it on my legs. See, last time I went all out with the rum and, like, the uh, the lemon wedge and everything, but this time I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more tame. I've got myself a nice Berliner Weiss from Pontoon Brewery. There we go. Nice. And what about you, Lexi? I am going true to form with my monster can <laughs> here. What flavor is it? I, <laughs> blue. <laughs> <laughs> favorite welcome, welcome to the salty spittoon what's your energy drink <laughs> oh yeah. blue you're gonna need that slow release energy because this video is gonna be like three hours long <laughs> yeah I yeah uh, i guess without further ado should we launch into talking about the first episode of our six episodes that we're gonna go over today yes please please gus go ahead the sooner the all right less so painful. my so my first episode is called The Crusty Sponge. Oh, no. Oof. That's just giving me flashbacks to whenever I need to do the dishes and I'm looking over into the basket at The Crusty Sponge and I'm thinking, oh, shit, I really need a new one of these because this is <laughs> fucking disgusting. And yet I never buy one. And that's on me. True to form, in the words of our holy savior, John Jacob, Mr. Enter, any episode that begins in the Krusty Krab is probably not going to be a good one. Though, I will point out, I did roll relatively low on the number generator. This is a this is from episode uh, from season five. Oh. I didn't even know season five was in the purview. I guess it was, because it came up on the number generator. Can't think of it, won't this be the earliest episode we've ever done? Because Lexi, wasn't uh House Fancy the debut episode for season six? Yes. For some reason. <laughs> Put your best foot forward. <laughs> so this is probably the earliest we've ever gone into SpongeBob history, but the Krusty Sponge is, I guess it's a dark premonition of things to come, of what this show will become, of what this franchise will become. Get ready, because this will be harrowing. Paint us a crusty word picture, Gus. <sighs> Alright, so this episode begins with Squidward going into the kitchen because orders have been so backed up that, like, paper is, like, flying out of the window. Spongebob has not been making orders, and that's because he is paralyzed with fear and standing completely rigid. 
This is an ominous way. Already it's got, like, Lost Episode vibes. Yeah. So, Squidward is trying to figure out what the deal is with him. What What's wrong with him? And Mr. Krabs rushes in, and he's like, Oh, I know what this is. This is the Thousand Yard Stare. I got this in my service days. And there's a close-up on Mr. Krabs' eyes, and you hear, like, war sounds, explosions, and, like, like, like clearly a gun being fired. But, like, only for a split second. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Krabs has killed before, and he'll kill again. Damn it! I wanna, I wanna <laughs> clarify too. Uh, last uh, on on the spot on a previous episode of this show, there was a gimmick that we could make up episodes. I'm not making this up. This is real. That's not part of the rules. If I did make this up, uh, I'd be put to death. <laughs> like. <laughs> Lexi would personally beat you to death with a can of monster. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is the fitting punishment for monsters. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the reason SpongeBob is so paralyzed with fear is because there's a food critic named Gene Scallop who is coming into the restaurant. Everyone is afraid of this. Mr. Krabs and Squidward are also tensing up as a result of this. But when the dude arrives, so the dude walks in and he's just this guy, like he's this fish with like a weirdly like thick butt and like <laughs> circular glasses that like shine when he like walks into the crab uh the crusty crab squidward says hey get in here already you're letting out the ac and that was curious to me because why would the air conditioning condition the water of this underwater location gus if you're gonna have a problem with that this is gonna be a long episode <laughs> hey if we're underwater right. how can there be a <laughs> You're so sorry, anyway. they used to make jokes about that. Like, they, they used to, like, have fun with times that they broke the, like, weird underwater thing. <laughs> like the, um, well, guess we'll just throw these in the fire. <laughs> By all rights, it should be the WC, not the AC. But anyway, Gene Scallop walks around the restaurant, he, like, sniffs the air, he goes up to Squidward and, like, basically is, is annoyed that Squidward is, like, a jerk. And then, uh, he takes one bite of a Krabby Patty and he walks straight out the door. <laughs> Wonderful. Bubble transition to the crew watching Gene Scallop on the news, and he's like a food critic on the news, so he he just, like, spends the next minute of the episode giving, like, what just g generally sounds like an actual, like, normal-ass food review <laughs> of the Krusty Krab. The kind of wonderful filler we've come to expect from late Spongebob. Amazing. The takeaway from this, like, weird food review is that Spongebob and the Krabby Patty he makes is, like, the best part of the Krusty Krabs. And, and like, if Krabs wants to really get more profits, he's got to, like, really capitalize on the fact that Spongebob works there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, this feels like a metaphor for the show's attitude towards, like, merchandising. Well, so the next day... Squidward has been put in a Spongebob suit. Uh. There's a Spongebob mascot outside, like, a sign. There's a whole Spongebob, like, railway, like, carousel train system outside, and the restaurant's name has been changed to the Krusty Sponge. I mean, to be fair, Gus, when this channel, like, first started blowing up, you said, like, Henry, when you're on videos, you need to dress like me. Like, I have, like, similar shirts to you. You make me put on, like, a big fake mustache, <laughs> even though I have a mustache. <laughs> Like, it was really strange. <laughs> That's a lie. You're lying. <laughs> Prove it, bitch. I never did that. <laughs> Lexi, he did that, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> I heard it clear as day before we started recording. <laughs> well, okay, well, Squidward, as Mr. Krabs is going insane and showing off, like, even Spongebob face napkins, Squidward says something you definitely didn't say to me when I ma didn't make you do all that stuff. You know, you really need to see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of weird hijinks are happening. There's this whole, like, train thing. I guess Squidward, in this, like, armless Spongebob costume, has to, like, make food while Spongebob is on the railway. All of this should be pointing to, like, oh, this is all gonna build up and collapse in on itself, just like, you know, other episodes in the show where the Krusty Krab has been, like, radically altered. But no, none of these things actually affect the episode much. What happens that actually causes this all to go downhill is that Mr. Krabs, he replaces the Krabby Patties with spongy patties. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> These are not patties made of sponge, though they look it. They are, in fact, just the Krabby Patties that he could not put in the freezer because they needed space for the SpongeBob head-shaped uh, ice cubes. And they've gone yellow. 
<laughs> they've turned yellow. So, so SpongeBob, so Mr. Krabs is selling rotten patties to customers, and they eat them, and they start to gain SpongeBob's coloration. Oh they start God. to like, they start to get like all yellow with like spots all over them, and. <laughs> Like walking around the restaurant like zombies, and SpongeBob even notes it's like, oh no, look at these horrible yellow zombies that look like me. They're all splotchy and yellow, and their stomachs are distended. That's the dialogue. Uh, Amazing natural. Do- what are your thoughts on all this so far, Lexi? <laughs> what What's the disease that turns your skin yellow? Is that jaundice? It's jaundice. Yeah. <laughs> the jaundice patties. Jaundice. That's patties. what the episode should have been called. <laughs> yeah, that would have really brought the kids in. <laughs> jaundice patties. Basically, now that everybody is like, like they've eaten the jaundice patties, they're wandering around the restaurant in like great pain. SpongeBob, like you know, reveals this to Mr. Krabs. He's like, "What have you done, Mr. Krabs? You've poisoned all our customers." <laughs> <laughs> like he says this and then uh apparently one of the customers yells at mr krabs about like this isn't a Krabby patty i'm gonna sue you and mr krabs is like ah oh, what are you really gonna do and then it turns out the guy's an undercover cop and then he <laughs> takes mr krabs and spongebob to court we switch locations to court <laughs> this feels too late in the episode to introduce this <laughs> well you're right because we're only in court for like a minute uh the <laughs> the um Poison, the, like a poison jury, a jury of all poisoned people from the patties, finds Mr. Krabs guilty. Even Gene Scallop is among the jury. And he's just like, yeah, this is messed up. <laughs> and Amazing. Mr. Krabs is found guilty by the judge who, like, smashes his gavel down. And it's a SpongeBob, like, official merchandise gavel. <laughs> what? But, but that's important, too, because Mr. Krabs says... Oh, uh, I, I see that that gavel's a SpongeBob gavel, and he's like, the judge is like, yeah, I'm a huge fan, actually. It's my most prized possession. So Mr. Krabs oh bribes the judge oh by getting Squidward to drive the like SpongeBob entertainment train in costume outside, so the judge can whip him with a leather whip and make him go around the track as many times as he needs to to like. You know, to, to make the bribe have value. <laughs> the episode ends on Mr. Krabs looking over this and saying, Ah, I love a happy ending. <laughs> Mr. Krabs is a fucking monster in, like, most late se- Like, uh, I, I wrote this in my notes for a later episode, which we'll, we'll get to in about an hour. Th- this is Drayton Krabs. This is, we mentioned in, like, the very first episode of Spongebob Boys... Like, Mr. Krabs seeming like Drayton Sawyer, the old man from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of modern episodes, you get this Drayton Krabs who is just this, like, immoral, greedy weirdo who still somehow always avoids consequences. Yeah, it's... it's pretty messed up. And the other thing about this episode that, like, I guess the main thing is just how, like, weird and commercial and shilly it all feels yeah that like it's just it's just everything is wall-to-wall spongebob products to the point that in universe someone is like a spongebob fan like that's very strange (laughs) that is what what are your like thoughts on this episode lexi how would you sum up your feelings on this (laughs) what was this episode called the crusty sponge yeah the crusty sponge uh i think i've seen this episode before (laughs) As a season five episode, yeah, like it's it, very we, early, we, yeah, exactly. the The other one that I'll bring up later is actually one I have seen. Like I saw it like way back in the past, but it happens to be one of my favorite bad SpongeBob episodes. So I like, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not gonna re-roll. I'm just gonna like go and talk about this episode. It was your house fancy. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, that's the best way uh, to describe it's it. It's implying that House Fancy was my favorite. It's the most dramatic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I means mean, it's, it's your it's favorite. The, it's the one that's most seared into your memory, Lexi. Oh, God, you're right, though. <laughs> you're oh, never going to forget that toll. <sighs> <laughs> oh, man. For what it's worth, I believe I've also seen this episode... And uh, I know that Gene Scallop is a uh, representation of real critic uh, Gene Shallop, who looks like that. Which, again... That that makes so much sense. 
<laughs> yeah, look up Jean Shallot real quick, and you'll see, like, it's it's a pretty dead-on representation, but also, like, why were they parodying this man in a Spongebob episode? Yeah, and why was he all of a sudden a food critic? Yeah, ha- ha- have a look. I think he was, like, a... I want to say film critic? He is a film critic, yeah. Well, he's a book and film critic, according to... Can you see a picture of this man as well, Lexi? Oh. Oh, this makes sense. This makes absolute sense. That is quite (laughs) the look. (laughs) Film and book critic. I've actually... I've actually, like, read a little Gene Shalit here and there uh, for for his film reviews. And, uh, yeah, it's one of those things where, like... I guess I have to give the writers props for, like, recreating the cadence of a critic really well. Mm -hmm. It it feels so out of place in a Spongebob episode because it just feels like something you'd be consuming as an article when, like, Gene Scallop is just, like, rattling off this stuff. But, um, I'm actually just surprised I didn't put together (laughs) that it was Gene Shallot and Gene Scallop. Which is the idea of, like, just having, like, weird, like, fish Roger Ebert walk in. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. or something like just why is he here <laughs> yeah, I, to be fair you, you know even later spongebob would do something even hackier and have like a parody of like gordon ramsay saying like neutered kid-friendly versions of all the things he says <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, but the characters in spongebob already do like they already say stuff like barnacles and you know fish paste and I don't know how you could do more of those without going into, like, Sailor Mouth territory. Do you ever think about how, like, that would be like if we, as, like, a swear, said, like, human paste? <laughs> like, imagine how weirded out someone would be if you, like, like knocked your elbow Man or something. Paste. And you went, ah, human paste! People would be like, oh, did you hit it that hard? I stub my toe and I just go, ah! Man butter! <laughs> no! <laughs> ah, oh. Gaido! <laughs> Fucking hell. Alright, so that was the crusty sponge. I'll tell you what, not the most horrible way we could start an episode, though. With our track record, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like I said, it's a premonition. It's like an appetizer. It's to ease in to the, like, the later eras where oh, God, things the just appetizer. completely spiraled out of control. <laughs> oh god, run. <laughs> yeah, so if that's like if that's like the complimentary bread basket, now we have uh Lexi with the real appetizer. So what are we <laughs> m- like mournfully feasting on today then, Lexi? Um <laughs> uh, okay, so we are getting the the house fancy partner piece, I guess, called Crabby Road. Crabby Road. Oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like those men from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite bowl cuts. <laughs> yeah. Our favorite bowl cuts this side of Rockley. Yodi One Direction. <laughs> Yodi. <laughs> the second time you fuckers tried to invade. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. All right. Okay. So tell us more, Lexi. Okay. So the op- the uh, uh well, the episode opens up at Bikini Bottom Jail. <laughs> Great way to begin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> uh, it's fine. <laughs> so uh, a new security guard is being trained to work the maximum security, and he's taken to the most dangerous inmate that they have there. He asks, "Oh God, what did he do? That was so bad." The mustachioed, uh, ex- experienced uh, security guard goes. He tried to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Oh no. What? Oh no. Oh my god. Have any, either of you watched Elfin Lead? Yes! The, oh, it's like the place where Lucy's being uh, kept. Sort of. So it's, it's like this <laughs> detached cell block. It, it looks like solitary confinement, almost. Wait, does this episode begin, like, the first scene of Elfin Lead? With, like, this Just plankton, like, twisting everyone's yeah. heads off with, like, <laughs> psychic arms. I want to see that. It's not oh that my metal. God. I'll tell you that. But... <laughs> Is it plankton? Yes, it's plankton. But, like, I just I just need to describe, like, it. he's kept in this, like, solitary confinement box. And it's, like, sitting in this, like big open room with like no floor surrounding the cell itself except for like a narrow bridge connecting some toy long shit yeah 
So, like, yeah, it, it's like this whole big buildup, like, oh, what did he do? It's like, it's it's plankton. It's plankton in there. They're, they're going into, like, because um, he's training this guy and he's going to, uh, you know, treat him to show, like, the the big dangerous, the big bad that they've got there. The, the um, mustachioed uh, guard leans on the door and it creaks open. And he just goes, well, it helps when we lock the door. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, no. The Kenny Bottom's finest, everyone. The newbie goes, oh, God, he's escaped. He could be right under our noses. And the mustachioed guard's mustache jumps off of his face <laughs> and escapes. And the, uh, the, uh, the newbie guard just goes, hey, Frank, what happened to your mustache? <laughs> And um, what? the and the jailbreak is relatively like quick. He breaks out of prison. You see, it's it is like it, you finally see like plankton. It was plankton, um, mm. and the mustache kind of stays on his head and droops down like uh, a wig. <laughs> 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 um. So then we cut to him coming back home. Karen is kicking him out for breaking out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow! Yeah, they're it's having too, like a marital. It's too dispute. real. <laughs> dispute, and she just pops out of the door with like a box of stuff, and throws him out of the chum bucket. They have such a toxic relationship. <laughs> it's very bizarre because, like, you'd think Plankton would build his computer wife because, like, you know, like he couldn't handle being with another human being who might have like differences and opinions with him. But no, his computer wife just seemingly loathes him and hates his guts and like does everything she can to like not believe in his dream. It's like Plankton, why did you build this? I'll give him props for building a companion that has free will though. I mean that is like the that is like the right thing to do. It's just weird that the evil character does it. You're so right. I mean as we've as we've learned down the road, like Plankton is rational. <laughs> Good point. The, the, the most yeah. like the most intelligent character in Bikini Bottom, <laughs> capable of building things that can transmute matter, is still trying to be a slightly more successful restaurant than the Krusty yeah. Krab. I just the thing is, if he can program a like a computer with free will, <laughs> it's it's again. Why has he not revolutionized the tech world? Why does my it boy matter? Just wants to run a restaurant with his computer wife. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! It, it's literally that meme. The like you could be the, this like Spider Man thing with like the evil pterodactyl. Uh, like villain, <laughs> and he's like, you could have used your knowledge of genetic engineering to cure cancer or like solve so many of the world's problems rather than just turning people into dinosaurs. And the villain's like, I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Plankton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's him to a T. Oh my God. So, so Plankton got thrown... So Plankton broke out of jail, but then got thrown out on his ass? By Karen, yes. Is that what we're... Yep. So far? Yeah. Um, and in that uh, box is an old, like, guitar. And we we get treated to an awkward flashback of baby Plankton kind of sitting on the neck of the guitar in his nursery. Because he, cause he's talking about, like, back when he had a band. And this band is his stuffed animals with, like, other instruments. <laughs> Oh my Plankton god. has a tragic life. <laughs> yeah. And what sucks is that we know he's got, like, a massive family, so no one, just, just no one loves him. Oh my god. Yeah, like, he had this giant, like, hillbilly family. Like, mm -hmm. they probably, he was interchangeable with all the other Planktons. But yeah, like, he's he's on this, like, enormous guitar, and he's just, like, sadly strumming <laughs> the strings. Aww. And then he comes out of the, the flashback, like, you know, come to think of it, I don't really have that many happy memories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so sad. <laughs> I love it though. That's a good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I didn't, I didn't put it there, but it's another good joke. So then we have um, SpongeBob, uniformed and ready to go to work, walking down the street, singing a song, and Plankton realizes that he's singing about the Patty formula, but like censoring himself. What? Right. So okay. he's he's like um, at a pinch of wah, <laughs> like <laughs> he's just interjecting these noises to censor out the actual ingredients. Oh my god! Yeah. Please continue, Lexi. I want to hear your take on more of these sound effects. <laughs> I can write yeah. One of the ones up. <laughs> 
See, 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 see how many you can remember. Oh, God. Yeah, what were they like? Oh, God, no, I don't remember. I just remember he, like, it ended with him taking out a butcher's cleaver and about to, like, a bit of chop. Love. <laughs> like, that's how it ends. Oh, my Beautiful. God. So SpongeBob just carries a butcher's knife around with him, you know, just in case. I guess so. I mean, he is going to work, but that's why you that... don't see Flats the Flounder anymore. <laughs> just fucking just chopped him. Ooh. Yeah, little known fact: SpongeBob is actually an excellent sushi chef. Oh god! Just yeah. take in the in-universe implications of that. Oh boy. <laughs> and Plankton's like, "What is that lovely song you're singing?" One thing leads to another, and SpongeBob sees the guitar that Plankton is sitting on, and he's like, Plankton, you want- I know what you're doing. You want me to join your band. (laughs) And Plankton, being the ever-opportunist, is like, yeah, and you can tell me about that song. We'll play it. (laughs) (laughs) So SpongeBob just kind of plucks the guitar out of the box, and- just forgoes going to work altogether and runs back home to talk to Pl- uh, to Patrick. <laughs> I don't know why I put this down here, but... Uh, so he, he goes to talk to Patrick about um, joining this band. But it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, Patrick, I have good news. Oh yeah, me too. What's your good news? <laughs> and Patrick goes, I found out where boogers came from. <laughs> oh my god. And he just whispers incoherently into uh, Spongebob's ear, and Spongebob just goes, ugh. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so then Spongebob goes ahead and, and says, um, we want you to join our band. And Patrick is like, oh yeah, I play a, a real mean belly. <laughs> I, this is another good joke, but like he's, he's slapping his own belly, and it, I, I, paused to, I paused it to take notes, played it again, I realized he's playing straight up just the William Tell overture on his belly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, wow. <laughs> it's so funny to picture like this scene unfolding and you'd be like, pause, one second, I need to write this down. <laughs> there needs to be some notes it's taken this, on this. Yeah. <laughs> this must be archived. It's, it's literally the Spongebob joke from the campfire episode, the, write this down, write this down. <laughs> Tic Tac. This is a this is also a really like creative way that Patrick's stupidity manifests. Like he can play a mean belly, but I like the fact that he just doesn't understand how to use like tools or instruments. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's just caveman esque. We're not cavemen, SpongeBob. We have technology. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah, like, I think Patrick, uh, even in Bad Spongebob, he's, like, the benchmark of how to write a stupid character in media. Yeah, when he, when he's on form, he's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Anyway, so, after Patrick pays, uh, plays a mean belly, what happens then? <laughs> then Squidward happens. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he happens. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I wrote it. Like, Squid happens. He insults them, and then... <laughs> Squid happens! I want that on a t-shirt! Squid. Yeah! <laughs> yeah Squid dude, sub- <laughs> Subscribe to the Dire Gentleman channel now to get your official Squid Happens t-shirt. Uh-huh. With, like, a gangster Squidward uh, no. on No! Yeah. No, it's just the Spongebob got... gangster one. We we got we got we got gangster Squidward and we got Splatoon from Splatoon. Motherfucking buy the shirt, it'll be real. We'll get sued. We gotta recoup costs. Buy the fucking shirt. Sold by one of those uh, bots that just steal art from Twitter and <laughs> puts them on shirts. Yeah. Oh my god, I hate those fucking things. Like that's those so... aren't even bots. That's just Momoe on his multi-screen setup. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't just stealing hey, wait. Got forty alternate accounts. Wait, no, don't pin that on Mo. He's not an art thief. He's like the opposite of that. That's not what he stands say, for. I was gonna say, as though that's in the top ten sketchiest things Mo Moe has done for money. <laughs> anyway. What else is he doing in the mole? So mo-hole? squid happens. The mo- oh no. <laughs> I haven't gone to ask him in a while. <laughs> you have to pay the mo okay. toll if you want to so, get in the mo hole. Squid happens. <laughs> he insults them and then... Con- <laughs> so he's like... You know, like, his whole, like, Squidward thing, like, what are you doing? And, uh, Spongebob's like, we're doing a band. (laughs) And he's like, oh, really? Well, you could do with some musical talent for me, but I don't think I would, uh, stoop down to rock and roll music. Um, 
and then he's like slowly like all the um the loudness the you know he's listing all these like things that are nasty about uh doing the whole thing like traveling around the world the crowds of fans screaming wanting a a standing ovation <sighs> you know what maybe i will <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> just convinces himself to join. This feels like a well-written episode. It is. <laughs> That's the surprise. I'm yeah. spoiling it now. Yeah. <laughs> so it, enjoy it while it lasts. How about that? Because Henry is coming after me. <laughs> Squidward gets excited. He runs back home because he needs to... His priority is, like, looking good for uh, a show. So then we cut um, to uh, SpongeBob's garage... And he's dressed... What did I put here? He's dressed like Jimi Hendrix mixed with Danny Sexbang. Incredible. No, no, oh, no what did I write here? Say... SpongeBob is dressed like Jimi Hendrix and Danny Sexbang had a weird sponge son. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> also... It's, it, it's Ninja Sponge Party. <laughs> no. Can I just say, it, it's very aspirational for SpongeBob, a character who famously cannot drive to have a garage in his house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And yet we've seen his garage door several times, I think. Oh yeah, it's always in like the weird back of his house place where you that's the where the last place you'd want to have like a outward facing garage with a closed off not on fence. the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you could just drive into your own yard and nowhere else it's fine. Love yeah, it. so so there there's that. And then Patrick walks in looking normal and SpongeBob's like when you're part of a band, you it, you have an opportunity to look, um... Patrick's like, like what? Like, uh... Like what? Say it. Well, I'm um, pizzazzy. <laughs> and Patrick goes, well, excuse me. Looks like you failed to notice my new hairdo. And uh, he looks the same. He turns around. There's just a ponytail jutting out from his skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. It is. It is. It's another good joke. SpongeBob is obviously like, "Oh, that's so cool. How'd you how'd you get to growing hair?" And Patrick's like, "Oh, it's part of my natural talent." So then he goes and demonstrates that he can suck the hair back into his head and replace it to sprout out from the top of his like pinhead. <laughs> Oh no, oh you no, it's not pinhead. funny anymore. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's funny to watch. Well, it, this is this is a um <laughs> Cronenberg SpongeBob scenario where it, it looks a lot better than it's being described as. <laughs> this is a Cronenberg class scenario. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That might make sense by the time this episode comes out, but depending <laughs> if the Les Morgan finale is dropped. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, I, I, th for my, for the sake of my sanity, I hope so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, for what is worth, Lexi, I love that like a running thing in this is just Patrick doing like strange things with his body. I know. <laughs> what is Pat back gonna sing the solo? Oh, Pat back. <laughs> Bring it back. I Pat brought back. Pat back. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um, so he, he does that. He sucks the hair back in and he makes a skullet. And that's like where the hair like sits for the rest of the episode. SpongeBob calls Squidward on the phone. Disappointingly, not on a, like a shell phone like they have been for the rest. It's just kind of like a phone made out of metal. Squidward is like, I can't make it to band practice. I've got to build my, my um, stage body. I don't remember what he calls it specifically, but he hangs up. And you see that he's bench pressing. <laughs> you you hear something break. You cut back to SpongeBob over the phone, and you hear Squidward oh. screaming. <laughs> so I was like, okay, oh, you know what? No. You know what? This is this is an episode that's coming out after. Uh, mm. uh, ugh, it's paired with Squidward torture porn. I'm glad that for that they've cut away from it completely. <laughs> so it's it is merciful. <laughs> Yeah, thank heaven for small, 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 small mercies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know in like, a, like in a different episode with maybe different writers and storyboarders, we would have seen a spine emerge from Squidward's back. And yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be like, like see his arms just horribly broken. 
<laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you'd see like him try to bench press, but it would come back down, and like the bones of his arms would like shoot out of his elbows <laughs> while he uh... makes uncomfortable choking noises. From the, like, fucking barbell over his neck. You know, for a show with a cast of mostly invertebrates, they sure do show characters' bones and spines a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bones sticking out of bodies. Lots of bones. Like, too many bones. <laughs> okay, so, uh, that phone call happens. Plankton comes in with, like, a, a box that he's carrying, that he's, like, hiding b- beneath, you know? And it's, mm-hmm. it's full of t-shirts. Uh, he has made t-shirts that say uh, the band name, which is Plankton and the Patty Steelers. Incredible. SpongeBob wow. is completely That's oblivious to it. That's another thing we're going to sell on the Dollar Gentleman store. Will- <laughs> yeah, the Plankton and the Patty Steelers. They it's will gonna sue be, us. It's going <laughs> to be Squid Happens, Splatoon, like just copyright infringement, <laughs> and Plankton and the Patty Steelers. And then an additional fourth... Uh, one called Gus and the Shirt Stealers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, please help us. Please buy our products. It's it's really difficult to like sell these clearly copyrighted things. <laughs> we don't make any money. We need someone to buy it. <laughs> so the good joke here is that um, they go through all these shirts. Patrick asks for a pink one. You cut to him wearing the shirt, and he goes, ha, it looks like a tattoo, because the pink <laughs> on the shirt and the pink of his skin match completely. That's clever. That. That's clever. I like that. <laughs> Patrick's really on form in this episode. He he's is like... killing it in this episode, I'm telling you. Yeah, it sounds like he's the best part. <laughs> kind of. Someone should actually check on Patrick's spine because it might be taking some stress from carrying this fucking episode. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I also put, Thank you. good joke, also, <laughs> immediately after that. So he SpongeBob goes up to Plankton, who's now standing on like a little... A workbench. He's like, I have some ideas for some of the music we can play at our set. And he proceeds to just make guitar noises with his mouth. <laughs> oh my god. Like good ones? Or? Like, you could probably say that they're annoying, but like, they sound like stuff that you would hear at a metal concert. Like those kind of guitar noises. Is it like... Is it like is it like Tom Kenny going like blah, 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 or is it like no? It, it's like it's literally guitar like a d- guitar making noise. Like SpongeBob is is oh, making okay, like fair. pitch perfect, like perfect soundboard. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, and one of them is just fair like enough, it's just screeching of the the strings, <laughs> and Plankton's just like ah, okay. <laughs> I love that. And then Plankton tries to like yes, okay, that sounds good. Now, what about lyrics? You know. We should uh, write songs from the heart, like uh, something that only you know. It can be a recipe, <laughs> you know, like just trying to go with SpongeBob into singing his song again, I guess. SpongeBob goes like, or maybe my friendship with Plankton. <laughs> and Plankton's just like, uh, no, takes some pliers and just clamps SpongeBob's lip shut. Uh, Patrick walks in and says, I once tried to search within myself for my deepest feelings, but all I found was this. And he holds up a pulsating stomach, I think. Wait, wait, what What season is this episode? Uh, six. Six. Well, that'll be funny for reasons we'll get into later. <laughs> Again, it's more like plank, uh, more like Patrick, like, body things. Yeah, it's not, like, gross or anything. It's about as gross as, like, when a brain kind of pops out of... <laughs> someone's body yeah Fair. it's it's not grotesque yeah. it's just like <laughs> I, re- I i searched deep within myself i found my stomach Fair. that's pretty and cool. spongebob just goes that, that is a very central aspect of patrick SpongeBob just turns to plankton <laughs> with his lips still clamped it's like is that what you mean plankton <laughs> it's just like so <laughs> sincere plankton's just like oh god <laughs> uh so then we cut we to plankton. like Another scene, still in the garage. Plankton is, like, laboring, uh, pushing this, like, machine into the, um, the garage. Looks like some sort of playing device. He's like, oh, it's a, it's a recorder. Here, let me hook you up to it, SpongeBob. And he straps him down to, like, this tortured... Yeah, it's it's a chair with, like, straps on the wrist, and he... <laughs> he, he ropes him in, he puts a, a pair of headphones over... A bull gag on him. <laughs> Oh, God. 
Uh, I'm I'm like half expecting him to like put the plug for the amp into SpongeBob like the body, like not like the guitar or anything, just like put it into one of his sponge holes. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> I yeah I I don't like that I said it either. Ah, so he puts headphones over his SpongeBob and um, Plankton turns this like dial. He turns the machine on, and you see SpongeBob's brain like moving through the aux cord <coughs> of the headphones oh, and into the machine. Weird. And you see like one of these three uh, lights turn on where it says like tape CD brain. <laughs> wow. I like that. And he. Oh, so for some reason with this machine, I'm just picturing that one that, um, do you know the one in The Princess Bride, uh, that is used to, like, torture, like, the, the big, like, the pain machine or whatever that is used to torture, uh, the Dread Pirate Robert slash Wesley? I'm just mm-hmm. picturing that. It's, it's very much like, um, one of those old-timey, uh, recording machines. Oh, like a reel-to-reel tape recorder. It's literally what it looks like, Fair but it, it has, like, this weird... <laughs> brain sucking mechanic (laughs) so then um the brain is inserted the brain light turns on and he starts dialing he starts turning this radio dial to tune into uh spongebob's either thoughts or his memories or something like that and spongebob starts singing a regular like these songs like about brushing his teeth one about um feeding gary and uh the third like tone that he twists to it's like just static. And Plankton's like, what's going on with this thing? He turns around, he screams, and it, Patrick had put the headphones on himself, and the machine blows up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fail. It's, it's really good. Oh my god, Patrick is like borderline like warping he reality. He literally in this is episode. carrying this entire episode with the jokes. He's the he's the MVP, the most valuable Patrick. <laughs> the most valuable Patrick pink character (laughs) which is such a weird like i'm just thinking like this is coming off of the heels of house fancy him shitting a toilet to life and to death (laughs) and borrowing spongebob's brain this is the this is directly associated with house fancy oh my god what a wild contrast yeah these two are night and day honestly like (laughs) it's it's so bizarre dude so anyway plankton starts crying spongebob says hey don't worry about it we need to, uh, I forget how exactly he words this, but, like, uh, I got us a gig at the Krusty Krab. Plank's just like, and he's like, yeah, but, uh, Old Man Krabs doesn't want us, uh, bothering the customers, so, um, we need to play, uh, after hours when nobody's around. When nobody's around, oh you say. <laughs> <laughs> so then you cut again <clears throat> to them practicing. The three of them are practicing. Sponge is on guitar, pat on belly. Plankton is on, like, a one-octave-sized little keyboard, just pressing the same key over and over again. Just like uh, Band Geeks with his little keyboard in there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay, so that... So the three of them cut to Squidward, who's been bench-pressing this whole time. And (laughs) you, you... Getting yoked. You see him push up one last time, and you see the muscles just bulge into his arms and <laughs> oh you my pull God. out and you see that um he has like his like handsome squidward body but i think this came out Sw- before swole handsome word. squidward so he, he swole word this episode was guest written by steve marmel <laughs> god he, damn he walked it. over god, from fairly parents and thought well, no. let's get some squidward muscle cock in here <laughs> oh, god. he's got eight limbs that's like Four more to be muscular. What's what's yeah, funny is that to jerk me off with. I'm Steve Marmel. Sorry. What's hilarious <laughs> is that he skipped his legs, so it's just his upper body. <laughs> so, but if he combined that with his like the body where he ate all the Krabby Patties, oh then he'd God. be the <laughs> thickest, swollest man of all time. Ladies, you may not like it, but this is what the <laughs> ideal what male body looks like. Looks like. <laughs> yeah. It went straight to his thighs. And then he swole up. <laughs> anyway, you, you I see will a, spit my beer. You see a rare moment of Squidward being excited for something. He takes his clarinet and he just runs excitedly over to SpongeBob's house and the whole house just starts 
uh, sort of like um, in the jellyfish episode where it just starts like raving <laughs> during their practice. Right. Um, mm. And then you get like the title card of one week later. Uh, the gang is walking down, walking over to the Krusty Krab late at night. Um, Plankton notices that a cop car is approaching them. And he has to hide because he's a fugitive. Um, so Sp- so SpongeBob is like, "Oh, I'll I'll hide you, buddy." He snorts plankton. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a sentence, and he's hiding in his nose. <laughs> well, they're really getting rock and roll now. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the cops stop them, and they're asking where they're going so late at night, and they're like, "Um, oh, we're going off to a gig." And the cop is like, all right, well, and then he notices that there's a whole green something coming out of SpongeBob's nose. Ooh. And he's like, hey, uh, <clears throat> you got him. You got some, uh, you know, he's, he's like trying to uh, signal to SpongeBob to get something. <laughs> it's just like, uh-huh, there's, there's a what? There's, there's just something. That, it's right there. Just, just <laughs> And then you see, like, a close-up of... You know it's plankton. His little legs like poke out, <laughs> and oh the cop is like, "All right, well, uh, keep your nose clean, kid." And he drives off. <laughs> Wait, so is this a planting and payoff of when Patrick found out where boogers came from earlier? I think in the episode? so. <laughs> <laughs> it's very subtle. Now we know too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Krabby Road is genius, and here's why. Hey, listen, this episode sounds like a magnum opus compared to House Fancy. <laughs> it is. So they get to the Krusty Krab. Plankton is eager McBeaver to get in there because it's it's <laughs> it's empty and there's no one there. So as soon as the doors open, he just runs off. They they set up the speakers and SpongeBob shouting to a very empty Krusty Krab. Are you ready, Squidward? He and he has like a black shirt with a skull on it. He wails on the guitar and he's like, "I'm ready." <laughs> it's so bizarre, but though. you know what? It's 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 Squidward having a good time. And after House Fancy, that's it's... amazing. <laughs> Imagine this happening side by side with House Fancy. It's like his worst day and his best day <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like, he went all out for this. Swalwood. And then, are you ready, Patrick? And he just, like, does, like, a drum riff on himself. He goes, I'm ready. And SpongeBob <laughs> goes, are you ready, Plankton? Silence. And then, um... Oh, no. You hear, you hear like, the telltale little, um... Little... Of, like, his little footsteps. <laughs> and you, you see, like, the formula bottle running across the floor. SpongeBob screams, Plankton! And, like, the force of, like, the speakers... Uh, cause the um, the bottle to crack, and something interesting happens. The formula unrolls and uh, falls on top of um, Plankton face up, and you do see text written on the paper. I want you to guess what is written for the secret formula of of what you can see on it. Get paid, get laid, Gatorade. <laughs> Does it say buy our shirts, please? <laughs> Sell it to Mo. So which is it, Lexi? You have to sell it to Mo. (laughs) Wait, no, we'll just be losing more money. (laughs) The running gag, I love the running gag in this episode is that Gus is just hemorrhaging money for some reason. (laughs) Nintendo, sell us all your IPs so we can make shirts of them. (laughs) Please, it's the only viable way. It's the only way we can continue to rip off your products. (laughs) So Lexi, what what does it say? It's keyboard smashing. (laughs) Yeah. It's just like mm. as if like nonsense. Lorem ipsum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, add one lorem ipsum. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's like kind of disappointing. Like you could have just had like something outrageous. It was written in the way that Mr. Krabs would be able to type it with those big meaty <laughs> yeah. claws. Oh my god, that big would be the best troll. Meaty claws. Bah, 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 bah. Um so yeah, after that, like SpongeBob is like, was this band just a front? For you to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula? And Plankton's just like, Nah, I was doing it for the music, man. Cut to outside. <laughs> Cops are just on the scene immediately. Oh my god. And uh, Plankton is inside this like tiny little uh, carrying case. Like a jail carrying case. And he's being escorted back to jail. And he's like, well, at least I have my mm-hmm. old cell. 
and he's like, "Oh no, we've got a new cell, new cell for you." And um, it's it's the it's the same two security guards. Um, the mustachioed one uh, flips over a painting, and there's a wall safe in the wall, <laughs> and he opens it, and he puts plankton in there. <laughs> my goodness, this episode was an odyssey. It's not over yet. Can I tell you where it's my? It's not over yet. Oh god. Oh. Before you before you finish it, Lexi, can I tell you where my twisted fucking mind went? Where? Whoa. Just the guy goes, "We have a new cell for you," and he bends over and spreads his ass. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> no, Henry Galley, why? It's Nicholas Withers bent over, looking at a gilded doorknob again. Uh, uh, <laughs> so he's just making his ears in. Withers noises. I thought I I think that the episode should have ended with them like we actually don't have a cell for you. This is the end of the line. <laughs> Death penalty. <laughs> Lethal injection. No, no, they just they they do it the humane way and they blow him up with a rock salt shotgun. Why waste the bullet? Just just crush him under your heel. Alexis Bristow on Plankton. Why waste a bullet? <laughs> Why waste a bullet? <laughs> Iconic. That's on a shirt now. Oh, Why God. waste a bullet? With Just a picture, picture of Lexi in. with a gun. Squid happens. Why waste the bullet? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> anyway, so he has this like wall safe, and then a teeny tiny little window opens up on the other side, on the opposite side of it, and it's the three of them again. And SpongeBob says, "Don't worry, Plankton. We only have twenty-two years left before our next big show." And they go and start <laughs> practicing. Outside of his window. <laughs> and he just screams and then the episode ends. I like that they, like, stick to the band. <coughs> like, again, it's nice that Squidward doesn't get, like, fucked up. Yeah, this... it's Plankton. <laughs> but, like, at least Plankton's a bad guy and he was, like, actively, like, taking advantage of, like, the goodwill of the other characters. So it doesn't feel, like, gratuitous that he's punished for Actually, it. to be fair, yeah, nobody gets it's... fucked up in this. It's just... That's the that's the, that's the thing. Patrick and Squidward both seem like they're really like the gags all seem very in character. The fact that Patrick is just doing this like crazy insane troll shit that nobody understands, and that Squidward like really leaning into that whole like kind of like narcissistic like Poser. wants to make himself look cool sort of thing, and and becoming a big swole boy like that's awesome. Yeah, no, it, it does feel like the characterization is pretty on point. Yeah, on I was one. surprised. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had yeah, a, a good yeah. few laughs, enough to put good joke. <laughs> it must have been one of those things where, like, House Fancy existed, so, like, this episode almost got, like, blocked out of people's brains because, like, they were too traumatized to remember the rest of the day in which they saw House Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Just so uninterested in watching whatever else. <laughs> Just, that's enough SpongeBob for today. That's enough SpongeBob forever. <laughs> So what are your closing thoughts on this one then, Lexi? Surprisingly good episode. Surprisingly merciful <laughs> episode. Considering what came before it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That is, uh, the good lord giveth, the good lord taketh away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh boy, so I guess, uh, it falls to me yep. now. Yes. Time to ruin it. <laughs> I have an important question for you oh, two boy. people. Mm-hmm. Right, so... Do you want to keep the like the streak of all right ones going, and me do the horrible one at the very end of the episode, or do you want the horrible one now and the decent one as dessert? I think we do the decent one now, yeah. and then have the latter half of the episode be dedicated to the nightmares. Leave leave the nightmares for the truly dedicated who listen to all three hours of what this video might be <laughs> you know uh, you know you know three hours that that might be generous <laughs> uh met our first hour so i mean that's true so shall i go for uh the, well, i'll go for the nice yeah. one then so run through my notes this is definitely the less serial killer looking half of my notes <laughs> Uh, this episode was called The Good Crabby Name. Oh boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I'll admit, the way this episode started, I didn't have hope. <laughs> because it, uh, it begins with Mr. Krabs in, like, the crow's nest of the Krusty Krab, mm. like, uh, but it's, like, up above the restaurant. And he's, like, 
creeping on people with his like with it like a telescope and a camera behind it. Oh. Yeah. And he's like he's like zeroing in on different like fish, like some random guy walking by, like the mailman. And then there's this old woman who is like one of the kind of stock old woman characters. And he's like muttering while he takes these various pictures. And when the the thing is on her, he goes you're a big one. Surprised I haven't seen you in the Krusty Krab before. Which is Bad like, touch. what the f- yeah, yeah like, what the fuck, that's Eugene? That's weird. Whoa, Eugene, that's a little strange that you said that. <laughs> it's just like some random, like, weird, like, fat shaming from Mr. Krabs. Which, which is extra weird and out of character for him, considering his, like, love interest throughout the show is Mrs. Puff, herself a larger lady. It, is it fat shaming or is he chubby chasing? That's my question. It, it sounds more disdainful rather than him being like, oh, you're on the list, lady. <laughs> that, it, that, it's also very weird considering the considerable cake that Mr. Krabs himself possesses. You'd think that he would not only flaunt that, but, you know, be interested in allowing other people to, you know, be that way. Uh, the, the very subject of our group chat. <laughs> Image. Yeah, no, it's true. We, 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 I want you to put that up the, on the uh, screen, the guys. Boys. When this goes up, Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs is one thick bit. Yeah, <laughs> let me see that crusty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is weird for probably the most pear-shaped character, uh, like literally, like a fucking pear. Yeah, in like animation history, to be shaming this. Yeah, we're not talking about this or this. We're talking, we're talking about, about this. this. <laughs> oh my god! Th- By the way, after the last episode, I did look up um, thick crabs, and I was immediately upset. <laughs> do he got the booty? He do. <laughs> yeah, he do. I mean, you he- signed yourself up for that. You get what you ask for. Yeah, it's true. You have no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> yeah, I played myself. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, you just played yourself. Anyway, oh my God. so Mr. Krabs, after taking these like creep shots of people, then descends back into the, the Krusty Krab, and we see him uh, summon uh, Squidward and Spongebob into That's the office. A... <laughs> and uh, That's such a word. They go in. Oh no. Yeah, well. He summons them. I... I literally was imagining Krabs drawing a pentagram and then Spongebob and Squidward appearing in front of it. Because they're all demons at this point. What is under the what ocean but just hell? I'm just... <laughs> uh, no, I'm thinking of um, that clip of... Wet hell. Spongebob, like, just forcing himself through the, like, wall of the... Yes. <laughs> he summons him. that mm-hmm. moment. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. The joke's so good it killed Lexi. Oh, 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 already God. dying. It's actually weirder than a pentagram. He calls them into the office, they go in, and every inch of the wall is covered in these like Polaroid creep shots he's taken of different people. It's funny how you said that this and... episode isn't the most serial killer y of your notes, and yet this is sounding like the most it... serial killer episode. <laughs> oh no. It picks up, it picks up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they, they, they go in and he's like, ah, I, I've looked at every single person in the city and through my calculations, these people, and he points to this like small zone that's been like cordoned off. These are the only fish that haven't eaten at the Krusty Krab. Ironically, they're all like old SpongeBob designs. They couldn't be bothered to come up with like new fish for this. Oh no. Mm. They're all people who in prior episodes have like empirically eaten at the Krusty yeah. Krab. That's anyway, stupid. <laughs> it is. He says, I'm going to need you two to go out and start marketing the Krusty Krab to people because there's like 3% of Bikini Bottom hasn't eaten here and I need their money. This is, again, it's very Drayton Krabs. Uh, yeah. Squibble is like, oh, we get, are we getting paid overtime for this? And when Mr. Krabs doesn't respond, Squibble just leaves. <laughs> but of course, uh, SpongeBob, because he's so whipped, uh, naturally uh, says, yep, I'll do this. It cuts, to, uh, we, we have a bubble transition to the facade of the Krusty Krab, and a wood panel above the door slides away, and a giant spatula slides out of the front, and on this spatula is Spongebob in a burger costume. <laughs> and Oh my god. And he yells the, the iconic phrase, Hello, Bottomites. 
I don't like that. Lobotomite. Which is how I intend to enter. Yeah, <laughs> lobotomite. Lobotomite. <laughs> <laughs> But just calling, like, just going, hello, bottomites, is how I intend to, like, enter every room <laughs> from now on. Oh my god, bottomites. Enter the bank. Hello, so, bottomites. Again, <laughs> are, there, are those just people who summon the Cenobites? Oh god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, I'm Pinhead's bottomite. <laughs> the bottomites are the Cenobites, but they're extremely masochistic instead of uh, sadistic. I, I like if that. If you're a bit more pushy, you can be a power bottomite. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a second cube that summons them. Yeah, it's, it's not a cube, it's like a circle. And you have to find <laughs> the, the right cube. one. Anyway, yeah. so this is actually where the episode really picks up, because uh, Spongebob in his burger costume leaps off the thing, and this guy is, like, walking in, this, like, dude in a hat, who we see throughout this episode... And Spongebob pulls out this fly and is like, Hey, have you heard of the Krusty Krab? And the guy goes, Yeah, I'm actually like trying to head inside now. And Spongebob is like, Well, how about you take one of these flyers? And every time the guy like tries to move on a different side of Spongebob, Spongebob like grows another arm <laughs> holding a different flyer. Which is, you know, pretty classic like Spongebob, like multiple limbs and shit. We- we- we've seen that before. Yeah. That's like pretty textbook shit. And uh, the guy eventually just grabs all the flies and yanks them, pulling off all of Spongebob's arms in the process, and uh, (laughs) then walks into the restaurant. But then, this episode's, again, weird running theme today, this episode's MVP, Patrick, enters the scene. We, We see him, like, hiding behind a rock, like, cowering and looking at Spongebob from a distance, and... For some reason, this just struck me as, like, a very, like, Riley oh. moment. Pat- Patrick is like, it's just as I feared. The, the Krabby Patties have finally begun to revolt. <laughs> this is a living nightmare. We have to eat them before they can eat us. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Which is just a very, like, harebrained Riley train of thought. So you can guess what happens. He leaps over and begins, like, savaging Spongebob and, like, biting onto the costume. And Spongebob's like, no, Patrick, it, it's me, it's me in a costume. And then Patrick sees him in it and is like, no, the, the Krabby Patty has eaten my friend. This has the same energy of, um, the Valentine's episode where Patrick's just like, I defy you, heart man. Yeah. <laughs> also... Also, the, the the whole thing of, like, a uh, a costume, like, eating a person was in that Fisherman episode we covered in Spongebob Boys Revelations. Oh, boy. Yes, you're right. You're right. Skin theory. But anyway, so uh, he eventually hits this thing so hard that Spongebob falls out of it, but he continues the onslaught. He, like, leaps on top of the Krusty Krab and then, like, leaps down and, like, pile drives this empty costume. <laughs> then picks it up, spins around with it, and tosses it, like, into the stratosphere. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and then and then it cuts to the chum bucket. The doors open and Patrick walks out, and uh, Plankton walks out and he goes, hmm, there's something in the air today. I think today I'll finally get a Krabby Patty. Then the costume falls and crushes him. <laughs> Good! Great! That's that's good payoff. Yeah. It cuts back to SpongeBob and uh, Patrick, and SpongeBob explains what he's actually doing, and he's like trying to market the Krusty Krab, and, Sp- and Patrick is like, ah, this isn't the way that you do this, SpongeBob. We need an all-out marketing blitz. We need to make it so like no one can avoid these advertisements. Everyone will know the name of, and he checks one of the flyers, uh, the, the the Krusty Krab. And then, like, he continues on this big speech, and at the end, he's like, ah, we will make sure that everyone in the city eats at the Clammy Clam. It's one of, like, the Krusty Krab, Patrick. <laughs> so what I like about this is, as I've often said in previous episodes, it's the classic Patrick uh, characterization of, he's not just dumb, he also thinks he's smart. Mm-hmm. We, we cut to Patrick, like... Cutting something into Spongebob's back? Okay. Not the worst thing he's done to Spongebob, but what the fuck? But but it's more, like, um, in the vein of, like, when he shaved him down to put him into his ghost costume than, like... Sometimes we're against Sponge flesh is a little different from people flesh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patrick carves elaborate scarification tattoos <laughs> to Spongebob. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Oh my god. Anyway, he, he's got these like weird backwards words on him, and then Patrick like paints up his back and grabs like you know those like paint roller balls, like those like paint like roller things on the mm-hmm. end of a stick. He stuffs it into SpongeBob's mouth and starts like whacking him against the wall again and again, but it's stamping eat at the crusty <laughs> crab across the wall. Oh my god. That's that's so that's marketing. Yeah. It's performance and art. We have like a Yeah. yeah. It's all performance art really. <laughs> we have uh we have like a bubble cut to this area just completely covered in like a hilarious number of eat at the crusty crab stamps and Patrick's like, ah, our work here is done. Let's run off and continue this. And then this cop appears with a classic SpongeBob dun du, 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 du. You know the like music mm-hmm. they play whenever like a cop is on screen? Yep, yep. It's actually a very funny sound design well because whenever the cop like moves in quite an abrupt way, they have like gun cocking noises. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, ah, graffiti, this is horrifying. I'm going to, like, track down the culprits of this. But first, I'm going to go eat at the Krusty Krab. <laughs> Which, again, is a pretty funny mm. joke. Definitely. This next one is, I think, perhaps one of the best jokes of the episode. It's SpongeBob and Patrick standing on the side of this cliff. And Patrick goes, I've hired a skywriter. <laughs> Got to just a man writing on a notebook as he falls through the air. And he turns the notebook around and it just says, help me, <laughs> on it, before he falls out of frame to his doom and there's like a crush oh! in the background. And Patrick <laughs> goes, hmm. And Patrick goes, hmm. For some reason, I thought that would be more effective. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, wait, time out. When did Patrick become like this? Like, he is more, he's doing more work for this than any other character. To get these people to eat at the Krusty Krab. You know, that's the weird thing. Like, Patrick has carried, like, two of the three episodes we've discussed so far. Mmm. Mm. So bizarre. Yeah, it's fucking... Because Patrick is one of those ones who, like, when he's off form in later episodes, he can be one of the most infuriating because he's just there to, like, victimize people. But when he's done right, he can have, like, some of the best lines. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because, yeah, the, the biggest problem with, like, later Patrick is that he either is a bully or like he can't contribute because like he can't think of anything interesting to do like they just don't yeah. let him yeah and that is not the case in this episode so anyway next cut spongebob and patrick like in a stall in the uh the crusty crab bathroom <laughs> not cottaging i should qualify they and the hat man from earlier comes in <laughs> and spongebob and patrick slide out the cubicle giggling and i think spongebob goes we left you a present uh, in there. Uh, <laughs> then they both run uh, off. Uh, <laughs> and the hat man is like, what a pair of weirdos. <laughs> and he goes inside and you see him on the toilet. So he pulls out the toilet paper and on it just again and again is written Eat of the Krusty Krab on like each individual square of paper. And he goes, I'm disgusted by this. And yet, hungry. Which is a weird thing to say in the toilet. <laughs> weird place to mark it. <laughs> Next we cut to Patrick piloting a biplane. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Which, which has like a, you know like a banner on the back saying "Eat at the Krusty Krab." I just I just want Patrick hang gliding again with like a little flag in his butt cheeks. Yeah, between his ass cheeks, because <laughs> we don't have enough cakes on this show. <laughs> We're cakes. Let them eat. SpongeBob, cake. the like official cartoon of fat asses. <laughs> Nothing but thick asses here at the SpongeBob. I clarify again, that is fat with a PH. As they're flying along, you think they're on a collision course because Patrick is like, oh look, my house! And like, looks away from the thing. But, just as he's approaching the blimp, he swerves up and goes over it without even realizing. So it's all fine, and like, Spongebob breathes a sigh of relief. Then Patrick turns around and is like, oh wow, Spongebob! And just turns his plane around and immediately crashes into the blimp. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the humanity! Oh, God. Yeah, Stephen Hindenburg. <laughs> god damn it. Oh my god. Why are there even blimps and planes underwater? <laughs> Such me, man. How could they do this? We cut to like a pair of fish on the ground. One of them who's just that guy who's like shirtless but has like quite realistic like Levi's style jeans on. Do you mm. know the one? I guess. Uh, 
But anyway, so he's looking at one of these houses, like, stamped with loads of, like, eat the Krusty Krab, and he says to his friend, man, if I see uh, Krusty Krab one more time today, I'm gonna scream. And then the blimp and plane crashes right next to them, with the LED just saying Krusty Krab, Krusty Krab, Krusty Krab, over and over again. And SpongeBob and Patrick climb out, and the guy approaches, and he goes, excuse me, what does that word on the blimp say? And one of them goes, Krusty Krab. And he says, yeah, I thought as much. And he inhales so hard that he inhales both SpongeBob and Patrick's skin. <laughs> so they're just skeletons. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then he screams so hard, he blows their skins back on, but onto the wrong bodies. <laughs> oh. Ew. So we've now got like... So we've now got, like, a Patrick-shaped Spongebob and, like, a Spongebob-shaped Patrick. <laughs> and then the guy just leaves. Okay. It's, it's a... Like, it sounds horrifying. Again, it's like, like I said, it's a Cronenberg-Spongebob situation <laughs> where, like, it sounds way worse than it is. It's, like, quite a funny visual gag. It got a laugh okay. out of me. I trust I get you. you. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> this time. And then Patrick unveils his last evil scheme because Mr. Krabs calls in and is like, wow, like... Your uh, things are really, like, working. There is loads of people in here. It's the result of uh, the brief period that I spent doing a psychology degree before I uh, switched to English language. Have you guys ever heard of the mere exposure effect? In passing. So the mere exposure effect is basically the principle that if you're exposed to something enough, you'll eventually just start to like it. Like, think, how many times have you, like, heard a really overplayed song on the radio and thought, oh, this song fucking sucks? But little by little, it kind of grows on you. All the Just because you hear it so much. All the That's time. the mere exposure mm. effect. And it's used in advertising a lot as well, where they will just, like like they do in this episode, just bomb you with it, make it so ubiquitous that eventually you just kind of, like, Stockholm Syndrome yourself into liking it because, well, if you see it this often, you might as well not let it make you miserable, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that is a little bit of a wisecrack style. The real psychology on why this method works. Anyway, <laughs> so Mr. Crab says, like, we've only got, like, a few more people that we need to convert. And Patrick goes, okay, I have my greatest uh, scheme yet. We need to go up onto, like, this big, like, complex, like, series of... So what's... Like, we don't really have these in England as much, but, like, what are they called in America where, you know, like, it's just, like, a shitload of roads but on, like, big elevated platforms, like, weaving and worming around oh. each other. I don't know what those are called, but they're, like... I drive I drive by those, like, constantly when I'm driving in where I live. Fair news. All right, so uh, they climb up on the thing, and they, like, see this big sign that's like says something like, no playing on the freeway. So I'm just like, Patrick, it says no playing on the freeway. We're, like, hit by a boat. And Patrick goes, we're not playing, SpongeBob. Like, slams his fist into his hand. We're working. And he uh, leaps into the middle of the road as a big... It's like a fucking big rig is approaching. Oh Truck. 18 wheels. Yeah, like an 18-wheeler. And Patrick goes, I'll deal with this. And he grabs this paint bucket full of white paint. And he, like, puts, like, a white strip across his mouth. He runs forward and he transforms his body into a pink traffic cone. <laughs> he is he, Patrick has truly become a transcendent being in these episodes. He is. Any thoughts, Lexi? No, head empty. <laughs> valid, <laughs> completely valid. Oh my god. So the tr we cut to the inside of the truck, which has two like comically kind of like hillbilly dudes in there. Like I think they're called like Cletus and Buford. <laughs> Are they like the dudes from the movie? Which movie? <laughs> the, the the first SpongeBob movie. No, no, no! Like, like not like Hicks, like proper like hillbillies. I see. The barbecue boys. Like and who are for some reason both driving this truck together, and they're like, "Hey, that's a pink traffic cone," and they're like, "Oh god!" And they pull like a hard turn, and the fucking thing like crashes and rolls over blocking the freeway sideways at which at which point Patrick goes here's your canvas Spongebob and they paint eat at the Krusty Krab on the side of this tipped over fucking like truck 
that's laying sideways blocking this freeway. Okay, okay. So my headcanon backstory for Patrick now is that because it's canonical that he like went to college because he roomed with flats. What did he get a degree in marketing? But he was so crazy in guerrilla in marketing that like they just like they they fired him. He was blacklisted from the industry. I fucking love that as a headcanon. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> He's too much. I'm just picturing for some reason, like, because it's just this, like, hustle at any cost, like, get it done. I'm just picturing Patrick, but as, like, Lou Bloom in Nightcrawler. Todd would love yeah, him. It, <laughs> like, that's Patrick the exact with, like, same these thing. big, like, wide eyes and this, like, greasy hair, like, dragging a body <laughs> into place. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Unless we think of something better, that's the episode up. <laughs> yeah. Pat- it's gotta involve Patrick. Patrick Nightcrawler. Anyway, so they they jump off and they sit and watch as a series of car like cars drive through the concrete dividers on the edge of the freeway, sails off and crashes onto the ground below. And they're just watching these various like boats pile up oh. and they're like oh. Oh, th- this is a victory. And they go back inside, and then all of these, like, rage-filled people climb out of the cars and start running towards the Krusty Krab. But among them is this, like, mailman, who was the last dude that Mr. Krabs needed to come in. Even though SpongeBob and Patrick are barricading the exits, Mr. Krabs is like, open it, we need to get this last guy in. And when he comes in, everyone else is, like, performing a riot and, like, destroying the place inside. But Mr. Krabs grabs this mailman pulls him into the crow's nest, and it, like, pulls both of them, like, up into above the roof. And I've written into my notes here, the last one on this was just, Mr. Krabs fucks the mailman. (laughs) Because that's what it looks like. (laughs) Like, he he pulls it up to the top, and the mailman tries to say something, and Mr. Krabs, like, shushes him, like, puts his claw to his lips, and is like, ah, let's just enjoy (laughs) the moment. No! He... It's like, uh, here, oh. eat this Krabby Patty. And the guy starts eating it. And it's like, what do you think of it? And I goes, it's pretty good, I guess. He's like, that'll be $20. <laughs> and he takes it from him. And then the entire Krusty Krab just collapses in on itself below the crow's nest because of, like, the rioting inside. So it's just this destroyed Krusty Krab with Mr. Krabs just, like, forcing this mailman, like, coercing him into eating this burger on top of the crow's nest, which is the last thing standing. I'm just genuinely surprised that, like, the mailman, like, finishes the burger and he says it was pretty good, and Mr. Krabs, like, it just takes a big drag of a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) It was a really good episode sandwiched between two exceptionally weird Mr. Krabs scenes. It sounds like it would have been really entertaining to watch. Yeah, (laughs) if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, it's true, if nothing else. (laughs) But you know, it's just, Mr. Krabs was just the one exceptionally weird, like, Drayton-y element. But like, this whole thing of just, like, guerrilla marketer Patrick. He like, he became a monster because like, he, you know, was employed by a monster. So we've learned that like, Patrick can, Patrick can grow hair on command, he can play a mean belly, (laughs) he can be be a marketing genius, (laughs) he he can throw things into the stratosphere with his immense strength. (laughs) Okay, so you know what's gonna blow both of your minds? You know how our episodes up until now have focused on like, either like, intense marketing or the music industry, or, like, Patrick just going above and beyond the Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Go on. The episode I'm about to tell you about combines all three in a way that I find truly beautiful and remarkable and memorable. Wow. This isn't the episode where Patrick, like, commissions to have a song made, is it? It is, in fact, Sing a Song of Patrick, the episode in which Patrick writes a song... And we get, like, a big character study as to, like, who he really is. This is, this is his, like... Citizen Kane. This is Patrick <laughs> Citizen Kane. Yes, exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. Thank you for putting into words what I could not Citizen put Star. Words. <laughs> are you ready? Lexi, Henry, are you no. ready? For <laughs> Sing a song of Patrick. I'm ready. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Spongebob, boys. We're never ready. Yeah. That's a, that's a crucial that's right. element of that's the goddamn right. Thank show. Thank you for remembering. Okay, 
So, Sing a Song of Patrick, which I much stress, I, I mentioned it before, it is one of my favorite bad Spongebob episodes. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So, Patrick is... The, the episode begins with Patrick laughing loudly at a comic book shop. Like, he's there and he's reading this comic and he's, like, laughing, he's crying, he's making all these, like, big emotional reactions to, like, there, and... The Weenie Hut Junior fish, like one of them, like the kind of like brownish, reddish, tannish one, is nearby. And he's like, he's trying to read his own comic book. And he's like, ugh, if only Inaudible Lad were here. <laughs> Can I just say, Gus, when you said Patrick is laughing at a comic book show, I pictured him just standing outside one, pointing at the building, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Check this fucking dweeb shit. I don't know if it's weirder if he's in or out of the building just laughing at, like, nothing, you know? It's a very like, it's Patrick one thing, thing to, like, to do, read honestly. a book aloud and laugh, but to just, with no, no stimulus, <laughs> just be like, <laughs> Off to a sterling start already. So, so anyway, Patrick, he, he, he is finished with this comic book, and he consumes it. He swallows the entire comic book. Okay. <laughs> and he says... Oh, man, nothing satisfies like a good story. Got him. Yeah, got him! <laughs> you got the concept of literature there, Patrick. It really sets the stage, though, because, like, you're like, wow, Patrick, like, you know, eats this story, he takes it into his being, and then, like, we're about to, like, you know, see a story about him. So it's like, you know, it, it gets us into the mindset, like, that this is going to be a story that should satisfy us. Do you know what's funny? That would have been a much better beginning for Lexi's episode, Patrick Man. Yeah. Yeah! No, you're so right! Why is, th like, why is this completely, like, cartoned off remotely in this episode that has mostly nothing to do with it? I I was just gonna say, like, uh, uh fucking, why did uh, Krabby Road start with Plankton in jail? <laughs> Good point. Good point. It was. That's true! I feel like it's just a sign of bad writing when it's just like, your opening scene just has fuck all to do with the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, Spongebob shows up with a stack of comic books, like, in front of his face, and this frightens Patrick. He doesn't know it's Spongebob, and he's like, wait, I didn't want to eat all of you! Oh! <laughs> and he gets scared, and Spongebob reveals his face. It's like, Patrick, wait, it's me. Patrick says hi to Spongebob, but burps up part of the comic book onto Spongebob's face. And it's a paper ad that reveals that, like, this music studio is like, give us a hundred dollars and a poem you wrote and we'll make your song a hit. Again, this would be so much better if, the, like, that, like, again, think of that in Patrick Man, that exact thing, but the ad is, like, a, or, like, your, like, order your own, like, mermaid man become a superhero kit. Yeah. It, it could have been easily been swapped for Patrick seeing on TV, like, Nicholas Withers saying, God. you know, send in your song. <laughs> like, I don't know why Nicholas Withers is where he ain't supposed to be, but I guess that's his whole <laughs> thing. You, this weird, like, this is a slight diversion. It's this weird dream I had where I looked up the Nicholas Withers page <laughs> on the, like, Spongebob wiki, and I was scrolling down, and it said, played by himself. <laughs> Henry, that wasn't a dream. That was him exerting his will over reality. That was Nicholas Payman and... speaking through you. Yeah, it's like him oh being like, because we made that joke about like uh, Lexi wasn't in the last one because uh, she was like trying to escape from Nicholas Withers. He was in my mind like, give me Lexi's location. I need to be able to track her down. <laughs> Did I did I say in the previous episode we discussed Nicholas Withers that like his name is a sentence? He withers. He withers everything he touches. He withers all of reality. <sighs> withers my soul. Patrick basically steals a hundred dollars from SpongeBob yeah. by saying like, "Oh yeah, you dropped this, but it's a hundred dollars. It's a sign. I need to like make this <sighs> this song, this great this great piece of music that will become a hit. It'll be the greatest thing I've ever done." And Spongebob's like, wait, no, this is my money to buy these comic books. Patrick, you can't do this. And Patrick says, no, it's a sign. And it fell out of the back of your pants. <laughs> I learned to trust signs like that. This is like the weird, like, jerk Patrick we were just discussing. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So Patrick, like, leaves to go write his song. And Spongebob is confronted by, like, the store clerk. And he's thrown out because he can't pay for the comic books. And, like, during this... 
SpongeBob's arms give out and like just drop with the sack of comic books. So like he's thrown out onto the street and SpongeBob's like, "Can I have my arms back?" <laughs> I like that. That's a good guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it comes back later. But we cut away to Patrick at SpongeBob's house being like, "Okay, uh, I need to like borrow a pencil and a piece of paper so I can write my my song." So I can, you know, be a big, big music star. And Spongebob, obviously, he allows Patrick to write this song in his house. Patrick is just, like, sitting in, like, one of Spongebob's study rooms. And he's like, this pencil's broken. It's not making any words. And Spongebob has to explain to Patrick that, like, oh, no, you have to think of the words. And then they appear on the paper when you use the pencil. (laughs) Oh, my. Again, it's like, Patrick... In Bad Patrick episodes, is genuinely like so dumb. It's like, like he, he they give him like such a low level of intellect. It feels like mean. It feels almost like we shouldn't be making jokes at the expense of someone who doesn't get this. Yeah, it's it's like pretty harsh and like it. The 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 one thing we end up learning though is that like you know Patrick like he rarely thinks. But when he does, it's disastrous. And one of the things that happens as a result of him, like, trying to dig deep and find, like, the the will to write this song is that he awakens, like, a trauma inside of his past. Like, he, he remembers that when he was in school, he wrote this poem that was like, Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm hungry, and he eats the poem. But... He wasn't in, like, poetry class. He was in, uh, gym class. So, he was pelted with dodgeballs because they were playing dodgeball? No, I've seen this one, too! Because I think the lyrics are actually Roses are red, violets are blue, I have to go to the bathroom. bathroom. The end. That's right, that's right. But the thing is, like, he doesn't just have that flashback. He, like, actually kind of articulates to Spongebob that, like, he's afraid to write anything because, like, he feels like... He'll get pelted with dodgeballs. So, so that they weirdly try to give this pathos. Yeah, it it actually almost does feel a little like. Uh, sorry again, Lexi, but it does feel like a little bit of a Riley moment, <laughs> where he's like, something terrible will befall me if I try to do this thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that that does feel like a weirdly like Riley mentality. This is definitely a character study episode. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is a Patrick character study episode. Because, like, nonetheless, despite his dodgeball trauma, he, like, tries. And he sits in front of that page, and he gets his brain working. And we see, like, gears, literal gears, turning in his brain that start to produce smoke out of his head as he starts, like, in agony, moving the pencil along the page. And, like, like <laughs> it's clearly painful for him. And he's, like, he's, like, ah! And Pat, as SpongeBob's, like, he's now outside the room, and he's knocking on the door. It's like, Patrick, don't overexert yourself! No! <laughs> This was me having to, like, write my assignment on the fucking Minecraft SCP for work. (laughs) That's how I felt, just forcing myself through it. The smoke comes out my fucking ears. I feel like, uh, since we're all writers, I think we've all been there at one point or another. Like, just brain, brain barely function, but must do work. Wait, you're telling me you guys are not at that point sometimes? I'm jealous. (laughs) Sometimes it's vomit, other times it's just a barren wasteland. Yeah, just mm. it's just constant like shitting <laughs> while trying to write. It's it's you know, my my brain is still on steampunk technology. It hasn't <laughs> quite gotten to like the future era. I have to take it into the shop every so often to get it replaced. But, but okay, but anyway, enough about like our writing experiences. <laughs> what happens next is a genuine like continuity error the likes of which i like have never seen in one of the episodes we've covered on spongebob boys yet the smoke from patrick's head goes out the window spongebob's window and goes like to the right of spongebob's house into squidward's window to which we pan out and we see that squidward's house is to the right of spongebob's house what (laughs) Oh, they just didn't give a fuck, did they? Aww. They 
didn't. It was it's, it's so Squidward is like looking out the window and he's like, "Stop it!" Like Patrick, are you thinking again? Stop getting this smoke in there. And like SpongeBob and Patrick and Squidward have this like you know riffy conversation, but the whole time I'm just staring at Squidward's house being not where it's supposed to be, having completely swapped places with this SpongeBob. Is a Berenstain Bears it's like thing. Yeah. What do you mean Squidward's house was on the left? You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, was there a point in the storyboards where Patrick was writing this from his house and that's why this is happening? Like, I just don't, I literally don't understand how this could have happened. I think you're right. I think it might have <gasps> just started from there and they just forgot. Can I just say, I love that, like, on this show, we will have things like toenails getting carved off and, like, uh, Karen having to do, like, emergency surgery on plankton, but the things that bother us are like, hmm, that's not the side of Squidward's that's house. That's part of the lore! <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. It, has anyone noticed how weird it is in House Fantasy that the clock chimes at times that aren't the hour? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the you SpongeBob know... Boys ethos, like, discussing the most depraved <laughs> shit imaginable, but the stuff that, like, bothers us are, like, these weird little details. <laughs> It's great. I love it. I love it. I don't know. According to YouTubers who I'm definitely a fan of and, like, even remember the names of, continuity is, like, the most important thing in fiction. There's nothing to do with writing or character consistency or, like, you know, actual story structure. It's all about continuity. It is true. If you have a close-up of a turd for six hours and that turd looks the same for those six hours, that's writing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I want to see that three-month documentary of grass growing. That, that like... <laughs> You know, there's no contradictions there. There's nothing you can, like, ding there. <laughs> Cinema sins. Growing grass. <laughs> <laughs> One sin for each blade. Yes! <laughs> when I was a kid, I ate grass once. Ding. <laughs> it's just Jeremy going insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So anyway, after that happens, Patrick... He has his song, he has the lyrics of his song, and he puts them in an envelope, and the envelope is, like, sagging and stinky, as if there's, like, a big old shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> and With so such he... fucking children, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> I was both there, like, lol, shit. <laughs> lol, poop. Okay, so he sends off his poop song <laughs> to the studio... There's, like, there's a band playing in the studio, and they, like, play this, like, uh... They play, like, one of the other songs that, like, was apparently sent in. And you just, like, cut to them after their performance. Like, one of them is just, like, I hate my life. And the keyboardist is, like, I hate your life, too, dude. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, I mean, That's <laughs> a great line. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I hate your life, too, dude. From this point on, it starts... There's real stakes to this, because... The band is told, like, okay, you have to play this song. We're giving you Patrick's song. Even though the paper looks like it's covered in stinky, like it's a poop song, you still uh -oh, have to play stinky. the song. And and they, they like, are they're horrified by it. Their eyes, like, pop out of their head and, like, shrink and shrivel and die. And they're like, all right, look, we're going to play this song if it kills us. A one, a two, smash cut, four gravestones. <laughs> yes! I remember that! <laughs> <laughs> and like Patrick's body count uh Patrick's body count uh that toilet and these four guys five and everyone who died in that horrible traffic accident where he blocked the freeway <laughs> <laughs> but so there's a pallbearer and he's like like standing there and Spongebob and Patrick are at the funeral and he's like they wanted you to have this and he gives Patrick a vinyl <laughs> Patrick's like oh boy my song <laughs> I I'm not gonna pretend that's not a brilliant joke cause it is it's so good it's Again. the funniest shit it's so good that's something weird right not, not to say that, like, oh, it's, that's so great, weird, right? It, but, like, it's our sense of humor, <laughs> I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's why we're laughing at it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it hit our funny bones. So, anyway, Patrick goes home, or he goes again to SpongeBob's house, and the two of them take SpongeBob's, like, state of the art giant speaker sound system, and they play. Patrick's song. <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna do my best to recreate what this song sounds like. Do you know what I hate? I hate that I could probably tell you at least the first few lyrics from memory. Shall, shall I see if I can? Yes. Oh, go for yes. it. Go for it. I'm right. looking at them right now. 
All right. Does it start with Twinkle Twinkle Patrick Star? It does. And then is it, uh, I made myself a sandwich, my mommy made it fresh? My mommy named it Fred. Strike one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lexi? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Lexi's dead. Reaction, there. <laughs> Lexi's dead. <laughs> uh, and it smells like, be- or tastes like beans and bacon. And smells like it's been dead. Writing stuff is hard, so I use a pointy pencil. Pointy, 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 point. pointy point. P.U. What's that horrible smell? Drum solo. What were you saying there, Lexi? <laughs> huh? What were you saying there? Oh, I was singing along. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have a head. It ends in a point. Pointy, pointy, pointy. Pointy, pointy, point. This song is over, except for this line. You win this round. Broccoli. Harmonized. <laughs> song of the summer. <laughs> Did you hear Lexi's maniacal oh. laughter? <laughs> 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 I literally, I literally remember watching this in college and like being so flabbergasted that I had to go to my like one other friend who was a huge sponge head and just be like, okay, like you ain't never seen shit like this. Like you got, you got to watch this (laughs) fucking episode. And I I explained it to to her and she like didn't believe me. And then I was like, no, we're watching this right now. When your friend (laughs) hands you the orcs cord. (laughs) Turn that shit up. <laughs> Bump that shit. So this song was so crazy, so wild, that it literally melted SpongeBob's house faster than the nematodes could eat it. <laughs> like, it, it, SpongeBob's house dies, but somehow SpongeBob himself doesn't understand this, and he's like, that was the best song ever. We gotta get that shit on the radio, Patrick, my man! And Patrick's like, oh boy! It's like and, a, Atlanta, but SpongeBob and Patrick... <laughs> they climb the radio tower, the mm-hmm. bikini bottom radio tower. They climb up, they they stick the like they stick like a record player on top and they start broadcasting Patrick's song throughout bikini bottom. If I remember correctly, Patrick puts like a piece of gum that keeps the record player on yeah. top of it, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, he he uses a piece of gum as epoxy <laughs> to keep it in place and the, and Bikini Bottom like descends into the collapse of society as a result of hearing this song. Like there are people crashing cars, an airplane crashes into a fireworks factory that starts shooting fireworks everywhere. There's just one of the like old men stock characters who kind of likes it, who's just like jamming out and jiving. I love the young people. Yeah, but if, like, if, like, Patrick hadn't already killed four people, this would be where, like, it's possible that, like, like, nobody will forget this day in Bikini Bottom. This, this sonic attack that deprived so many of their lives and businesses. Imagine just the scene of this band, like, finishing recording and then just immediately, like, keeling over in the booth. The thing is, it's, it's like, because we don't see it. Whatever we imagine becomes so much funnier. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We should have. Wait, before we go on, how do each of us headcanon that the actual deaths of this band took place? <laughs> Gus, what do you think? I think because their eyes shriveled up when they were looking upon the document, I think their entire bodies like shrank and became pruny and then like like turned into like like dust. They what do you think? The song as the California raisins. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 thought is it it literally just happened like the smash cut like they finished the song they like death note all just die at the same time <laughs> just like, oh, 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 they just drop <laughs> like clutching yeah. their chests and yeah. falling over <laughs> oh my god imagine this imagine like th- like we i this would be way too high effort but just the idea of, like, all of these, like, musicians, like, dropping dead, clutching their chests, cut with, like, Patrick, with, like, Death Note-style animation, writing the song with, like, these sweeping pen strokes, while all of the, like, orchestral music swells. 
<laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, okay. We need the we need the sing a song of Patrick Snyder cut because that song would have de- that scene would have definitely made it in. Yeah. <laughs> takes a potato chip and he eats it. Yeah. No, he just takes the page and eats it. <laughs> <laughs> He did! That's not even a uh, uh, fabrication! I take a sticky God, note this is just death and note. eat it. So anyway, the uh, the second good joke of the episode happens when uh, all of Bikini Bottom is like, we must destroy whatever is tampering with our radio system. And they go, and there's people who are like, get your torches, get your torches here. Like a food cart selling torches. Mm-hmm. And then there's another one selling pitchforks. It's like, pitchforks? Can't have an angry mob without pitchforks. And they've got their pitchforks and torches. And then there's a third guy going like, cotton candy? Can't have a riot without cotton candy. <laughs> and they just, they walk past him. They don't even pay attention to him. They sandbag him. Poor guy. How's he going to put his kids through college now? Exactly. That happens. And then, uh, essentially, SpongeBob and Patrick are confronted in front of the radio tower and this angry mob descends upon them and you hear like these sounds of like violence and like chainsaws and like like they're getting torn apart and then it pans over and spongebob and patrick are making new like weird like trash noises (laughs) with chainsaws and like spongebob has a chainsaw and a tambourine and patrick is like shouting and like playing a guitar The, the angry mob stops and patrick goes like Oh, that was my brand new song. (laughs) (laughs) So there's this fucking, like, this day-to-day sketch um, where uh, two characters are talking and the other goes, can you summon up up in a word? No. Can you summon up in a noise? (laughs) And that just makes me think of this. That's exactly what happened. The angry mob is like, okay, we're good. We're not going to attack you because that new song at least got the other song out of our heads. Like, (laughs) everything's cool now. It's all fine. But then Patrick remembers his song. And in a moment of, like, pure artistic inspiration, he tries to play it and recreate it himself on the guitar. He goes, twinkle, twinkle, Patrick Star. But then uh, his demons come back to haunt him (laughs) because... The gym teacher from the dodgeball trauma scene is in the crowd and he says, it looks like you still haven't learned your lesson. And the crowd takes out dodgeballs. Is the gym teacher the same age? He's the same age. Because my my headcanon is that this is like a black swan type thing. And this is all, like, happening in Patrick's head. This, like, last part. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a deleted part of the episode where, like, Patrick gets out of the hospital after being pelted by dodgeballs, and he gets into his car, and he, like, turns the, like, rearview mirror to face him, and he's like, It's me, Patrick. (laughs) The real one. Yes. Perfect pink. (laughs) God damn it. Perfect pink! (laughs) Uh, (sighs) So that was Sing a Song of Patrick. Oh boy, that means it's my turn again. What a fucking episode. Like, I think it says something that that episode stuck in all of our heads. Yeah, I got, like, weirdly nostalgic for yeah. that. <laughs> that's the thing. It's That's why it's, like, one of my favorite episodes of all time. The fact that we all harmonized on broccoli at the end of the song. <laughs> yeah. I should clarify bad episodes of all time, but then again, I'm two beers in, and, like, I didn't say it, so clearly I think it is one of my best episodes, favorite episodes of all time. Let me tell you, boys, I'm two beers in, and standards are slipping. <laughs> no, that's the real standards. Yeah. If you're not sober and you and then you think something's your favorite, it's probably your favorite. Good point. You're just, your waking mind won't admit Yeah, you're just it. being honest with yourself. All right, so, let's see. Yeah. What have you got for us? Alright, so this is the other companion story to Patrick Man. This is the left nut of Patrick Man. Okay, cool. (laughs) Great. I, I, I hope you heard how hard I deflated after that. (laughs) 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 Oh, no. Anyway, it's called Gary's New Toy. Well, why does it, why does that strike fear into me? I don't know why, but I felt a chill go, go down my spine when you said that. And I don't know why. Uh, am I justified in that fear, Lexi? I don't know. I'm going to tell you about it. All and right, you go. can... 
I feel like there's a certain age where the word toy somehow <coughs> starts to be more of a thing that elicits fear <laughs> rather than something that's pure joy. Yeah, that's fair. Take it away, Lexi. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Uh, episode begins, Spongebob alarm clock is blaring out, and it just fucking dies. <laughs> That's the note I have here. <laughs> Patrick shit in it again. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so what happens is, what's funny is that I, I said that, but the alarm clock does die in Spongebob's lap. And oh, no. he he p- <laughs> he picks up the clock portion of the foghorn alarm clock, and he goes, "Gary, have you been chewing on my alarm clock again?" And you like just see this mangled mess in his hand with like um snail slime all over it. Ugh. You hear like a wet squish sound, and SpongeBob picks up his slippers, and they have also been covered in uh snail slime and uh chewed. <laughs> yeah, he goes to the bathroom, Gary. Um, is chewing on his toothbrush. Um, and what's funny is that it's kind of cute. This episode is kind of cute, where, like, um, uh, Gary is chewing on his toothbrush. SpongeBob kind of tickles him to get him to let go, which I was like, oh, that's cute. And then, uh, SpongeBob is trying to, like, brush his teeth. Um, Gary is then, like, (laughs) chewing on the toothpaste bottle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a bar of soap, because he, (laughs) he gets him to let go into the tub. And uh, SpongeBob is just like, "Are you are you bored? I'll play with you after I I get ready." Um, <laughs> Sp- Sponge. Uh, so then cut to him eating cereal, and there's a oh, for some reason there's cereal in the bowl, but there's a hole in the bottom of the bowl. So when he picks up the bowl, all the cereal just kind of spills out. Why don't you do that thing where you don't at all move a bowl and you just walk over to it and pour cereal within? It's and- just there. <laughs> and there's just a perfect, like, circle. Just and It's not a perfect circle, but, like, the bottom is just gone. <laughs> like, it, it's wow. not even, it's not even like the rim of the bowl has, like, a chomp taken out of it. It looks like someone punched through the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> and you, you pan over to Gary, and he just has, like, p- bits of porcelain in his mouth. And he, <laughs> Spongebob goes, Gary, did you, did you chew through my bowl? And he's just like, meow. <laughs> Oh, that's so Gary. <laughs> and then SpongeBob makes the um, the comment that he's, it's like he's teething again, which is another like cute comment because it's like, oh, he had Gary ever since he was a, a little snail, a baby snail, Aww. baby snail. Ben that's um, adorable. It's also kind of terrifying to think of a snail with teeth. Like now yeah. that I'm thinking about it, like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, Gary's always like filled this weird, uncanny space of he's kind of a snail, kind of a cat. And it's only, like, our frame of reference that allows that to not be utter nightmare fuel. Yeah, they, they haven't done worms as dogs in a while, have they? It's so funny that you say that. But, um... They, they fill in the gap, like, we fill in the gaps where it would be just, like, scary to imagine a snail acting like that. Mm-hmm. We fill in the gaps with our own experiences with cats. Fair. What's funny is that, like, my favorite Gary gag is when um, he's trying to get spongebob's attention and so he finally just like slithers up to him and he just makes a lion roar to get him out of bed (laughs) that's a great gag that's my yeah that's my favorite gag with gary gary gag um yeah so he's just like it's like gary is teething again um and then suddenly the entire table just like topples over and gary had bit holes into the beach ball that his dining table sits on which I thought was interesting because you never really see SpongeBob interacting with his other furniture, nor do you see that furniture having shit done to it it's in true. ways that like take into account what they're made of. Because so much of that was just like matte paints in like the classic show. So you're right; mm-hmm. like there would only be like select elements of it that are actually like on the animation layer. Yeah, it's very it was, very true. Yeah. It was interesting to see you. Yeah, that is interesting. What season was this, by the way? Um, uh, this is uh, season nine. Eh, fair play, fair play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at, uh, uh, there's spelling mistakes in here, so it's just spung. <laughs> spung. Spung. Oh, hell no, spung a bomb. Spung. Oh, hell no, spung bomb took 40 Benadryls. Spungy. Um, so, yeah, so, th- so then we get, see, so we, uh, ah! 
We move into the <laughs> inciting incident where this episode's gonna go. SpongeBob asks if he needs a new chew toy. Um, Gary bites him on the nose and just kind of grinds. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> these fucking notes man uh it just says gareth, gareth? <laughs> and that's because uh, that's because they meet patrick at the pet store that they're going to and um mm. patrick calls him gareth so it's like okay Weird. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so patrick, yeah <laughs> again just being on another level yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair patrick's not as like you know, Hulkamania just carrying this entire episode on his back, but... I see. <laughs> I don't know why I said Hulkamania, but... Um, you know what? Fuck it. Patrick Hulkamania. <laughs> he's, he's the Brother. Atlas of this episode. <laughs> who's, who's the cream of the crop, and the cream will rise to the oh, top. God. <laughs> oh, fuck! Wait, I just did Randy Savage! Oh, no! <laughs> Ooh, ah! yeah. I'm a fucking fraud! <laughs> Anyway, Patrick is at the pet store. Um, he says that he's there for the free samples. And then he proceeds to... Patrick's going really roily in this one. <laughs> punch a hole into a bag of worm food and just eats the handful. Ugh. Patrick's that... a fucking savage. Patrick's he is an animal. Asp- he is. It's aspirational. And he's yeah. in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What's funny is that uh, Spongebob says, like, oh, we're here to get a new chew, a chew toy for uh, Gary. And he's like, oh, well, that's over at the... What's funny is that they play it like Patrick knows where everything is at this store. He's been here several times. <laughs> oh, this is sad <laughs> over at that aisle. Let me take you over there. We so finally leave. have Patrick's day job. <laughs> I, I almost feel like, yeah, you could go that direction, but you could also go like, oh, this is where Patrick was, like, sold. <laughs> like, he was a pet <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> he's an animal it solved the yeah. mystery of his parentage oh god yeah so you know he's he's over there uh eating the worm food before he offers to take them over to the the toy section for gary um they walk off screen patrick runs back on it, you know that he's coming back for more worm food but he actually just punches a hole into the bag that isn't opened right next to the one that he did open. Dirty takes bastard. another handful of food, eats it, goes back. That's a power move. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. What can, like, what can you do about that? Like, Someone who's willing to do that. I don't, I don't want to eat this old-ass worm food from this bag that's already been opened. I want the fresh shit. Nuba. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That or all the other worms that visit the store just get a free snack. Yeah, everyone wins. <laughs> yeah, Patrick exactly. is out here for the working man. The worming man. The working worm. <laughs> it's it's the worming worm. It's open door philosophy. He's just creating new opportunities for everyone around him. <laughs> the praxis of Patrick. My new book. The p- Patraxis. <laughs> Patraxis. God damn it. Sorry, Alexa, you were saying. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, okay, so SpongeBob takes him over to the, the toy aisle. Patrick gets uh, distracted by the um, snail treats bin and just starts eating out of that he's like all right gary what what chew toy do you uh would you want he just starts picking out toys from the wall so he picks out a bone uh gary with his powerful chompers pops it immediately um, i love gary and his powerful chompers <laughs> that's <laughs> that's in the runnings for quote of the episode <laughs> God. yeah that and why would you waste a bullet <laughs> <laughs> Blanked in is beneath you. <laughs> Lexi slides out her combat knife and goes in to take it first. <laughs> Holy shit. And so I took that personally. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next uh, toy he uh, takes off of the wall is a little fire hydrant. Gar- I keep forgetting his name. Gary <clears throat> takes it into his mouth. Uh, chomps down really hard and then just it squirts water at Spongebob's face for some reason oh, I've never heard no. of a chew toy that does that Spongebob got sprayed I... Spongebob got sprayed the thing is like why would you give a pet a like like I get like having like like a something filled with water for like kids to play with 
But, like, pets typically don't like surprise water out of nowhere. <laughs> That's very like, true. Yeah, why it was, you make, it was like, why would you like make a chew toy that, like, directly spews water? If they, like, bite it wrong, they're gonna be like, Ah! I'm afraid <laughs> of this forever! Why would you do this to me? Here's another thing. How does it squeak? Yeah. <laughs> Because it also these yeah. are also squeaky toys, right? So you 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 pick one. You pick water inside or squeak inside. It has a drowning mouse both. in it. That's why. <laughs> wow! How did it get this deep into the ocean? <laughs> I don't know. Shit, it's you a got sea me. Mouse. Theory busted. It's a sea rat. <laughs> yeah. So it's a bilge rat. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So at the end of the aisle, Patrick is like making a ruckus. And uh, Spongebob goes over to see what he's making a ruckus about. And it's like this giant, uh, he's, he's like hunched over this giant like box thing. What's it called? The Pet Point 3000. Oh my god. Huh. Um, and it, uh, Spongebob says it's like it's a machine that plays with your pet for you. Um, so it's, it's basically like a Weird. laser pointer machine. Okay. That's what it is. Huh. Um, they have those, like, for he, real on the market, don't they? Like, for, like, yeah, destruction yeah, cats we have and one. shit. Oh, fair enough. Mm. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of cats, so it's one that has, like, two lasers on it, so it'll it'll play with more than one cat. Wait till it's you cute. see mm. it shift into maximum overdrive! <laughs> You're gonna really hate saying that! <laughs> I should have gotten the turbo. Uh, so, oh, my God. So, yeah, uh... Patrick is just like, it looks so high-tech. Spongebob asks Gary, like, oh, would you want to play with this? Gary's just like, eh. Maybe <laughs> slithers off. Um, so, uh, I think, I forget who turns it on, but someone turns it on. And um, the arm comes out with the laser pointer. And Spongebob is like, ooh, yeah, this looks high-tech. And Patrick sees the laser, and he starts going at it like a cat. Who could have guessed? <laughs> Who could have guessed? And oh then, and then Patrick is like, "I love this thing. Let's turn it up. I, I, I want you. I want you guys. I, I know I do this every time, but I want you guys to guess what you think turning it up on a, a laser pointer means." I think because I have seen one of the greatest cartoons of our time, Cat Scratch. That these lasers will now become deadly and will zap and cut through everything in their path. Okay, so first of all, thanks for making me remember fucking Cat Scratch, dick. Cat Scratch! Anyway, um, this is what we do on this fucking channel. We activate memories of, like, fucking Cat Scratch <laughs> and the pissing cramp twins. Anyway. Anyway, so... I, I basically agree with Gus, but I also want to say, like, can we talk about how Patrick vacillates between, like, this kind of, like, evil marketing genius and, like, the level of intelligence of, like, a literal dog? The thing about Patrick's involvement in all of these episodes... I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing! Like, with the exception of the song of Patrick, which is explicitly about him, it seems like he shows up and then steals the show. <laughs> like, in all the ones he's been in, he has been the, like, the, like, centerpiece. He's been the, like, master and commander of everything. He controls the horizontal, the vertical. Like, I I'm, I'm starting to think that this episode's art should just be Nightcrawler Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagining Patrick just being like, have you ever considered that my problem isn't that I don't get people, but that I don't like them? <laughs> to SpongeBob yeah. in, in like a boat. Oh my god. Anyway, so Holy Lexi, shit. were we on the money that this will now become like a deadly, like actual like laser thing? Yes. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I it, knew it. It hits Patrick in the middle of his forehead and you start to hear a sizzle noise. Of course. And uh, oh, Patrick man. just kind of you know, kind of lets it happen. Um, <laughs> this is just who I am now. Something bizarre happens that I wasn't expecting at all. Okay. Sorry, excuse mm. my actual animal. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to get in on this. Is that is that Gary? Is that Gary from SpongeBob? <laughs> oh shit, Lexi! I can't believe you have a Gary in real life. <laughs> I have. I have <laughs> Gareth. That's here so with cool. Me. That's so poggers. That's actual... That's Gareth Spongebob. <laughs> Gareth Spongebob. <laughs> <It's> SquarePants. 
<laughs> sponge, sponge. You really went all sponge. out on this one, Lexi. <laughs> sponge bomb. Yeah. yeah. Um, all the stops. So, so what was so, the thing that happened that like surprised you? So it burns completely through Patrick's head. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Pa- uh, SpongeBob kind of freaks out and turns the machine off. And Patrick is unresponsive. He oh. uh, he hobbles he's over. N- he's, he's got he, the thousand yard stare. He, he hobbles over a little bit. He stumbles. His brain rolls out from the tiny little hole. Ah! And onto on top of SpongeBob, and it falls into one of his head holes. And oh SpongeBob God. just has this look like he's been violated. <laughs> I, would I don't too. like any of this. This is awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't last very long. He he kind of just where he snorted plankton in the last episode I told you about. He kind mm. of just like hocks it back out through his nose Ugh. and uh it just kind of like yeah you, you probably need this back buddy <laughs> and he pops it back into his head i don't think patrick has ever benefited from having that brain and patrick is still unresponsive <laughs> he's fucking this dead dude is dead oh no <laughs> oh, just, even though there's one shot to i the thought head. this was gary's new toy not patrick <laughs> fucking dying patrick's new lobotomy <laughs> to be fair, they they do save it a little bit where Patrick does kind of turn his head. So he, he hmm, he, he's he's still out of commission. He's effectively lobotomized. Yeah. But like, oh my God, I'm just I, picturing like, I... you know the bit in the first Resident Evil movie where they have like the wall of like crisscrossing lasers, like vaporize like the security team into like little pieces that then fall apart. So picturing that happening to Patrick, courtesy of this like cat distracting machine. Oh God. Oh my God. Uh, but okay, so we. M- we cut away from that to go see what Gary's doing. And um, he comes across a tower of bouncy balls. So, you know, you have you ever been in, like, a supermarket and, like, sort of in, like, the general children's oh. area? They'll have, like, oh. the giant... I remember those. We we had, like, one of those at the shoe store I worked at at one point. Mm-hmm. Like... Disaster always waiting to happen with one of those. <laughs> Sometimes it did, even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's a tower of bouncy balls or uh, squeaky toys. And there's a big, shiny red one at the top. And Gary is just, like, transfixed. So he, he starts slithering up the tower. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for, like, the whole of the, the ball tower to just... Uh, make a mess, but it never does, and it's it's like a weird setup that it never really does. That, that. would have been a pisser to oh, animate. That, <laughs> yeah, to, that yeah. To be fair, like that's actually disappointing that they just like were like, nah. We need to spend it, the extra animation money on Patrick's brain like jiggle physics. <laughs> I I mean, it's like it's like you know we put Chekhov's gun in this scene, but. It would cost a lot to fire it. How about we just forget the we whole thing? We were too thing? busy firing it into Patrick's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were too busy killing Patrick because he's too powerful. Why waste the bullet? <laughs> Patrick is so powerful. Like these shirts, they create powerful legal controversies that we cannot escape from. Help us. Donate money. Don't even buy the shirts anymore. They're contraband. It's not even Chekhov's <laughs> gun. It's Lexi's gun. So Alexis Bristow and her <laughs> trademark gun. Her laser gun. That she is not going to no waste a bullet pistol. on you with. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste a bullet? It doesn't fire bullets. It fires deadly lasers that kill you. It's more fun to pistol whip you to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not worth a bullet. Thumb. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be Patrick Nightcrawler and Lexi with a gun. That's the art. <laughs> We had me with a knife yeah. last time. This time it's got to be Lexi with a gun. Yeah, Move. wait, it just it's SpongeBob Boys is a series that arms all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Next one, it's just Gus with an IED. <laughs> <laughs> 
looked like one of those like bomb belts oh. on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. You think I won't? <laughs> Anyways, very sorry, Lexi. Please continue. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, um, so SpongeBob comes into the same area of the store with the the, the ball tower. Uh, the red ball you see like drops to the floor. SpongeBob picks it up and he's like, "Oh, maybe Gary would like this." Gary, where are you? And Gary drops and lands on top of SpongeBob, and he's like, "Oh, oh there you are, buddy. Do you like this one?" <laughs> and you know, so it's like, "Oh yeah." So he he found a toy that he liked. So they go home. SpongeBob tries to play fetch with the ball. Um, he throws it into the kitchen. Uh, Gary doesn't come back with it, but you hear, like, a little squeaking. Um, SpongeBob goes into the kitchen, and, um, it, it, Gary is there chewing on it. And he's like, uh, Gary, you're supposed to bring it back. Um, Gary has the ball in his mouth, turns around to hide underneath the kitchen table, and just continues to chew on it. <laughs> this feels realistic, so- to be fair. This is animal behavior. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what they do. It's 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 a very good like animal episode. I really liked it. Um, and SpongeBob's just like, well, as long as he's not chewing on my stuff, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> so, uh, we cut to later that day. That oh, felt no. like such a natural ending. Is the weird part. So it's so scary that more is happening. My God. <laughs> I know, right? It's just a slice of life episode. Like, like, that just feels <laughs> There's like nothing surreal like about a natural it. end point. <laughs> like, Except uh, for Patrick getting his chewing on my stuff. lobotomized. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So what happens then? Oh, so, so I I was eager eager McBeaver, and I missed a a bit where it it. Uh, so Gary is chewing on this thing. We, we're then treated to like. This is before Spongebob says, like, well, as long as he's not chewing on my stuff. Uh, Gary, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, have you ever had those, like, or interacted with those toys where it's, like, um, like an alligator mouth and you have to press on the teeth and you lose if the mouth, like, snaps on you? Oh, yeah, like, like those kind of board games. Mm. Like, it's basically just, like, kind of a weird, like, reformatting of, like, the mechanics of Jenga. Yeah. Right. Like, it's, like, um... Risk and reward sort of thing. Yeah, like, like, you, can... like you, you press different teeth. And it's like, yeah, and it's half, like, lottery, too. Yeah, um, like, one of them is, like, a randomly assigned tooth that will make it, like, snap down. Yeah. Have you ever, like, opened those up? Like, have you ever opened the mouth, like... I think so? To where, to where both sides are, like... All the teeth I... are pointed north, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, so, just... I, I I don't know if I want to like destroy the magic, you know. That, the, this that is... feels like a feels like a violation. It feels like a worse punishment awaits me if I do that. <laughs> this is this is what Gary is doing. <laughs> he has opened his mouth at a one hundred and eighty degree angle. He has fully unhinged his jaw. No, yes. Gary. <laughs> and he is like running the ball he's, around he's each. He's released his limiters. <laughs> I, I don't know why they did it. They didn't have to. They even added, like, some hyper detail to the teeth. Oh. Like, like it's still a, a cartoon detail, but, like, it's... Mm. Still a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, so, like, this whole episode seems to be, like... I think they've gone too far with the Gary is also a cat thing. Because... Now, like, we're genuinely, like, looking at, like, a Gary that is this abomination of two animals that are wildly different from each other and should never be combined. Yeah, two utterly incongruent animals. Ugh, so so that nightmare happens for, like, two seconds. And it's over. And then Spongebob's like, well, as long as he's not chewing on my stuff, he leaves. Uh, where am I? Later that night. Later that- yeah, later that night. Um, oh, Spongebob turns the TV off to go check on where Gary is, because he hasn't, like, been squeaking the toy for very long. Um, and he finds him in a room having a tea party with the ball. Oh. Which is uh, adorable. So, you know, he has, like, the yeah. ball propped up on a little chair, and he's, like, pouring tea for <laughs> for this little thing. Okay, the and, ball is Mrs. Nesbitt. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> Caught that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Sponge is like, oh, you're having a tea party. How cute. 
um, can I join in? Um, and he's, like, doing this thing, and Gary just kind of, like, harumphs and, uh, goes off screen, pushes in, like, a baby carriage, puts the ball in it, and pushes it away very haughtily. This is not how I pictured this episode going, I'll admit. Me either. No. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Everything just sort of, like, went out the window for me when Patrick lobotomy happened. Yeah, this is an episode that is going beyond its natural life. Like, this is an episode that had its natural ending, but, like, took a weird left turn, and now we're experiencing the fever dream that happens of, like, oh, so, like, this is what happens in the SpongeBob world when an episode ends, and yet we're still here. Yeah, there's still seven minutes of this episode left. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this is like Gee, be, this it, is like being in school. Like, you, you know when you're like going into like school for like a parent teacher conference or something, and it's like, oh, this is school at night. This feels wrong. I don't like this. <laughs> I think when Patrick got lobotomized in this episode, so did the episode itself. You know. Yeah, the laser <laughs> shot out of the screen and hit the writer. <laughs> through and time their brain, fell in, yeah. their brain fell into the the episode but like in a soupy uncoordinated fashion right. so you say seven minutes left i don't actually know that i just know that there's a big chunk of episode left all right sweet let's yeah, continue yeah it's it's it goes um which oh, is man. which is literally oh, boy the... <laughs> do it go <laughs> Won't stop, no matter how many times I ask. Um, <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> yeah, that happens. SpongeBob actually tries the tea. He's like, oh, that's not tea. And then oh. we cut to we cut to the kitchen. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm dying. Um, oh, no. SpongeBob boy is me. sapping your life force. Yeah. This is why I needed the, the break. Longest, this, is, this is the longest we've ever Spongebob boyed. And it's You're taking right. a physical toll. <laughs> oh, we have this and then we have Henry's last one, so we can do it. Yes. Spongebob oh, boys. Shit. So we cut to the kitchen. Uh, Spongebob's like, okay, well, I know how to get uh, Gary's attention. Through canned food. So he's doing that thing where, um, you know, you start up the can opener and the yeah. cat should you know, come out. Uh, so he's like starting and stopping, looking behind him, starting and stopping, looking behind him, starting and stopping, start, stop, start, stop. This episode uh, was and, written and, by a real cat owner, wasn't it? <laughs> Probably. It really feels it. Like there's a genuine amount of like, yeah, this just is, like, this yep, is someone this is the venting. daily life of someone who owns it. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a really good, like pet episode. I was like really tickled by it. I was surprised. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So he he does that start stop start stop up until like the can like fully opens, and he like does this like big flourish of like, Gary foods, <laughs> Gary's not there. <laughs> it's just like ah great. Um. So that so now he's like carrying the bowl full of uh, canned food, looking for Gary, and he finds him <laughs> in the garage. With the lights off. See, this is where I'm starting to feel like that weird chill I got down my spine was a bit warranted. Like, are they, like, playing weird music in this scene? No. Okay. Um, Gary is, is in the garage. Silent? Entirely silent? <laughs> with the lights off, Blair Witch style. But he's staring, instead of the corner that he's in, he's staring at the ball that's propped up on a stool. And Sp Weird. SpongeBob turns the lights on, and he's like, "Gary, what are you doing?" And Gary turns around. Like Gary looks totally normal from behind, but he turns around, and you see that he's taken some sort of a paint or lipstick or something. I was just so flabbergasted at what I was looking at. I didn't notice like what he was actually holding, but he had painted oh, his hell. face red to look like the ball. This is menacing. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Gary's like, would you snail me? I'd snail. Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd God. snail me hard. Yeah. Goodbye, horses. <laughs> but like, this this is like weirdly like Junji Ito esque. You know, when someone will like in one of his, we'll get that one angry comment. Is like, eh, Ito's a hack. Eh, Junji Ito's overrated. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Anyway, 
Uh, but no, like, it has that weird, like, Junji Ito vibe of, like, one thing will happen and another character will become, like, uncomfortably obsessed with it. Like, it reminds me of, like, the dad at the very start of Uzumaki. I was gonna say, it's very Uzumaki-esque, like, if you're- if we're gonna take it into that, like... Yeah, exactly, like, he gets more obsessed with spirals, and then he starts, like, manifesting spirals. Yeah. Anyway, so he does that. And, uh, <laughs> Gary is I caught. Like how... <laughs> huh? Sorry, I just had the dumbest weeaboo take about how, like... Uzumaki and Gurren Lagann are the complete polar opposite ways of interpreting spirals. Oh, God. Damn it. That's another podcast. <laughs> anyway, let's oh, see. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, so, it, Gary is caught. He just kind of takes the ball into his mouth. Goes away. <laughs> He's um, oh, Weird. <laughs> um... Strange. No, no, I'm dumb. Because I, I was like, oh, yeah, that happens, right? No, my memory is shit. Um, Spongebob is like, what are you doing? I think you need to, I think you need to, uh, take some time away from the ball. I think you're obsessed. And, uh, Gary hits the garage door button, and the garage door picks up Spongebob and closes him up against the ceiling. <laughs> like, like the oh, kill oh, from no. Scream? <laughs> like the girl uh, he, I mean, garage? he's not dead. He's not oh, dead. Fuck. He's just yeah. kind of pinned up against the ceiling. But, um... Then Gary takes the ball and then s- slithers away with it. Okay. So then we cut again to, like, Spongebob catching up to Gary, uh, chewing on it in the living room. And, uh, no, sorry, he's not chewing on it. He's just kind of standing around, like, not doing anything. And he's like... He's... Gary... Gary is T-posing. Yes, that's somehow possible, <laughs> even though he doesn't have arms. He was T-posing in the garage earlier. But, um, With his eye stalks, he was like directly rigid <laughs> upward, and then his eye stalks were out to the oh side. God. It's really odd. That'd be scary Asserting as hell. dominance. Um, I'd hate to see anything that looked like that. Uh, so again, my 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 notes are like all scrambled. So I'm like, this happened, right? No, my memory is shit. To be fair, Lexi. <laughs> to be fair, Lexi. This episode itself seems yeah. scrambled. <laughs> it is a little bit. So. Yeah, uh, Gary is just kind of chilling in the living room. No ball in sight. And Spongebob is just like, Gary, you're obsessed. Hand it over. I know you're hiding it. And Gary's just like, meow. Um, and he's like, all right, no, well, I'm going to check your shell. <laughs> right? And you see, like, this look of slight panic on Gary's face. So, you, you know, he's he's hiding something in there, at least. <laughs> Ten bricks of coke. <laughs> Oh, no. So, um, you know, Spongebob reaches... uh, He opens up a hatch on the shell, which we've seen him do before. Um, Reaches his hand in. Pulls out a hairball. Yeah. Reaches in again. Pulls out another hairball. Reaches in again. Pulls out his wallet. And it's... Okay, why... Why does a why does a creature that has no hair produce yeah, hair? Yeah, I don't like the cat joke. Of the, yeah, because like SpongeBob doesn't have hair either. Again, again, Gary is this like nightmare creature in this episode. I don't like anything he's becoming or like is implied to have been from. Yeah, the it's beginning weird. I, I don't know why, but this episode this. unnerves me. <laughs> okay, so uh, he takes out his wallet out of Gary's shell, and um, SpongeBob has this like oddly like adult moment like uh like adult life kind of thing where he's like huh. it's like my wallet i thought i lost this i and i just canceled my credit cards oh and then he goes and then he goes back to cleaning out his uh, the shell like that's so weird. That's such a weird thing for SpongeBob to say. This whole episode, right, like, besides I'm, I'm Patrick, glad that is it's... like weirdly real-world things intruding into these characters. We're seeing a snapshot of like SpongeBob's life when he's like not doing the show. Yeah, it's just like there's something about this episode that it it's like it feels like it takes from real life experiences almost a little too much. Yeah, it's it's uncanny. Like, it feels like this shouldn't have been a Spongebob episode. Like, like this feels like it... Aside from the, like, Patrick being lobotomized, this episode (laughs) very much feels like... That's the one outlier. This episode otherwise feels like it could be an episode in, like, a live-action sitcom. Yeah. 
it feels like we have now become the creepy Mr. Krabs from the beginning of that other episode, and we're voyeuristically peering into the live of SpongeBob yeah, SquarePants. Yeah, I was like saying to Lexi off mic during a period that you, the people at home, won't know where Gus went to the toilet and we cut it. Um, I was... <laughs> I was saying to Lexi off mic that, like, the reason, like, even though the tropes of it are very goofy, I think the reason that, like, the Lost episode creepypasta genre really took off is there is something genuinely unnerving about, like, watching a cartoon and, like, things that are just a little bit off happening. Like, it gets stupid when you're getting into all the, like, hyper-realistic blood and eyes and shit, but, like... I feel like we, there was all, like, at least one episode of a show that we watched when we were a kid that, like, something was just kind of wrong about it, and we just felt kind of unnerved. This whole, like, I was saying in specific to Gary just sitting, like, Blair Witch style in the corner of the garage with the lights off. Like, there's something about that that, like, transcends the surrealty of the show, and it dips into, like, just... You have no idea what's going to happen with this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you respond not as if it's a cartoon trope where wacky hijinks will ensue, but as if it's, like, a real thing that you're kind of trying to assess the, the like, relative scariness or not scariness of. I, I know, like, I know this is yeah. a bit of a tangent, but, like, it's already a crazy episode, and I, I legitimately do not know any of the time I'm going to get a chance to bring this up, but I think it's something that, like, if you're someone at home who's experienced this... This is my genuine kind of Candle Cove thing. So, well, we know that you did, Gus. Lexi, did you ever watch that show, The Cramp Twins, on Cartoon Network? Uh, I don't About, like, think the, so. the two brothers. Like, one of them's blue and a dick. And, like, they have, like, weird, like, outlines. <laughs> He's an evil blue man! I don't think I have. G- Google The Tramp... Uh, the Cramp Twins. <laughs> the Tramp Twins. That's a, different, that's a different show. Google... It was, uh... It was... On the Fox box here in America. Yeah, go- Google like, the Cramp it, Twins it, real quick, because like yeah. if you, you did see this, uh, like just like Cramp, as in like, oh, I've got a cramp. Cramp Twins. Yeah, C R A M P Twins. Like, like you'll know it if you watched it, because it has a very distinct and like kind of uncomfortable looking. Uh, okay, I have seen these characters before. I've never watched the show. There was this really fucking sinister episode of this show. I can't remember all the details, but, like, there was just this, like, strange story of, like, this kid who once, like, fell off his bike and, like, smashed all of his teeth out on the fall. (laughs) And, like, it's this, like, ominous local urban legend thing of, like, this guy who is out there, like, to this day, like, doesn't have teeth... And he's, like, taking teeth from, like, the children in the neighborhood. And this urban legend proliferates because there are what looks like teeth sticking out of the ground in, like, a certain part of town. And, like, the paranoia of this, like, increases over the episode. And at the very end, you find out that these, like, things that they thought were teeth that were sticking out of the ground were actually just these, like, weird-shaped, like, turnips or something, that, like, a kid who lives, like, near the swamp in town, like, like their family, like, eats and it's all fine. But at the very oh. end of this episode, there's this weird thing where, like, they're, like, getting uh, something from the ice cream man, and they're talking about this, and someone says something, and, like, the, the dude in the ice cream man is like, oh, you know, you guys shouldn't, like, believe in urban legends like that. And he gives this wide grin, and he's got no fucking teeth. Just gums, while this, like, creepy, Uh. like, toy box piano music is playing, and he's, like, laughing with his, like, gums exposed. And I think it ends with, like, them just running away from him. And legitimately, us discussing this, like, has just made that, like, appear in my mind. And, like, that, to this day freaks me out a little bit despite being like this fucking horror writer who's like seen hereditary the babadook like all of these like us like scariest of all time movies but yeah that weird little detail fucks me up i'm now just i'm hearing what you're saying through sorry the wall. Me- meg's just appeared i can hear what you're saying through the wall and that they did the exact same thing in that episode of hey arnold with the train 
Do you remember that? Yeah! Oh my Go, god, one, the hair yeah. with the train episode? Yeah, he remembers the one with the train. Um, I do. Like a, they, they wanted to go to the train station at, like, midnight to see this, like, this train that, like, takes you to hell or something like that. It was really, like, it was a really classic, like, the kind of ghost story the kids who live in a small town with the train station make mm. up. They're like, oh, if you go there at 3 a.m., this ghost train will come through. And the last shot of the episode is, like, the ghost conductor, like, sitting on the train playing the banjo. Like, after they've already had that, like, oh, so the myth was because of this. But then at the end, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. oh th thank you, Meg. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, the thing is, like, I just remember, like, there was, um, there was this one night of cartoons that uh like me and a friend and my brother were, were we were all watching together and it was this one night of cartoon network cartoons that like there was a billy and mandy episode i think the episode was tickle me mandy where like there was like a doll version of mandy that was created and like was slowly becoming more and more malevolent and the episode like like starts going buck wild on like a shot of billy's face in hyper detail just going like ah and like screaming in agony and there was like uh courage the cowardly dog had like a bizarre inside of a stomach episode that like I, I can't even remember fully what it was but it was just this one night of of pure terror and fear as every cartoon seemed to be like turning inward on itself and uh, to get back to like what you were saying earlier about the cramp twins i think moments like that and experiences like that they still scare us because even though we've developed the tools to handle you know darker media we didn't then and it reminds us of a time that we were more vulnerable and like felt like there was more of a fight or flight survival reflex at the time. Yeah, and I've got to ask, Lexi, before you like hop into the rest of this fucking roller coaster of an episode, do you have any weird like half remembered like cartoon that like creeped the shit out of you moment? Totally fine if not, but like I'm really curious. I mean, aside from Gary just being you yeah. know Blair Witch, <laughs> but like um, is it... yeah. uh, childhood. Like, is there like something from a cartoon that like you just think about and it like gives you the jitters? And by the way, if everyone who's watching this, congratulations, you made it this far in. If you have one of these, please <laughs> yeah. comment it, because I want to know. Yeah. I don't think I can Absolutely. think of it right yeah. off the bat right now. I know that, um, that some of them were from Courage the Cowardly Dog, and I think that's cheating. Yeah, true, because <laughs> they, they tried. Yeah, that, that show, every every other episode was like that. I mean, the, the claymation girl from that show was a big one for the me. The violin ever. playing girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she becomes she's live action, but then she becomes horrifying claymation. Yeah, yeah. it's like that. Uh, it's like that Pee Wee's Big Adventure thing with Large, large Marge. Marge. Tell you what, Lexi, we'll just continue the episode, but be thinking, and if it comes up at any point between now and the end, just like blurt it out because I'm <laughs> I'm immensely curious about these weird like just childhood things that yeah, obviously like aren't as scary. Like, in hindsight, as the horror which day. But like Gus said, remind us of this time, like, where we felt that vulnerable. Anyway, till then, ha what the fuck happens next in this bizarre episode? So SpongeBob's just had to cancel his credit cards. <laughs> well, he found his wallet after having just canceled his credit cards. But, um, uh, yeah, he, he reaches back in, takes out a hairball again, takes out a toothbrush, and he finally finds the ball. And... SpongeBob is like, all right, well, I'm taking this, and I'm giving you some space, like, out of sight, out of mind. He puts it on top of a, a dresser drawer, um, like, out of reach of Gary, which... Total idea for a, a, something that can climb, like Gary can. <laughs> yeah, like, he can climb walls. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure he can climb the side of the... Anyway, um, SpongeBob is, like, trying to be, like... Well, you know, just just take a day to just cool off from your obsession with this ball. Um, by the morning, you'll probably not even remember that it exists. And then um, the lights go off. Um, SpongeBob does this thing where he turns it off with his he like pulls the light chain with his feet. I don't know. I don't know. I just remembered that that happened. SpongeBob is asleep or going to sleep. You see the ball roll on its own. It glows red, oh. and 
I don't Ga- like this. <laughs> Gary, Gary sees it, and you <laughs> see his eyeballs also glow red. So at the time, I saw this, and it's like, oh, okay. So it's like a, it's like a um, visual representation of Gary just not being able to forget about this ball. Obsession. Yes. So yeah. the next morning happens. The alarm clock dies again. And I, I knew I would fucking forget to know, to mention this, but Spongebob, the morning previous, tried to fix the clock by duct-taping it together. Um, the clock right. dies and just keels over, and Spongebob just kind of leaves it on the floor at that point. It just cannot catch a break. Spongebob notices that Gary and the ball are gone, and he's mad. So he goes around the house, he finally finds Gary... He has climbed onto the ceiling of the living room, chewing on the ball. So I was picturing the baby from Train Spotting when it's like crawling across the ceiling. Oh God! Hugh McGregor just screaming underneath. Gary just can't stop with this thing. <laughs> so, what's funny is that like when I was watching it, I found this really funny. So SpongeBob, he's like, "Gary, get down right now!" He walks off screen and he comes back, also walking on the ceiling. <laughs> To try and get Gary, um, Gary turns away and keeps chewing, uh, Sp- and then Spongebob, like, falls from the ceiling. And I was like, oh, that, for some reason that made me think of that gag that's in, um, Chowder, where he runs ar- along the, s- the border of the screen upside down <laughs> when, um, when he's chasing someone. I was, it's a really good gag, and it made me think of that. I've also just got to share... Like, in my stupid fucking mind, it's just playing the fucking Lionel Richie thing, but like, oh, what a feeling, Spongebob is on the ceiling. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid, but my brain keeps playing that on a loop. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> okay, so, um, he falls, so then he goes and gets a broom, uh, to like, try and bat at, uh, Gary to get down from the ceiling. <sighs> So, uh, Spongebob then slips, and he skewers himself on the handle of the broom. So you you just have the broom handle just going through his head. He's a sponge, so he has holes. Right, right, but he's impaled? Is that what this is supposed to look like? Yes, like it's gone through his head, (laughs) and his eyeballs have been pushed out of their sockets and are rolling on the floor. Bad. This is bad. Bad. That mm, that doesn't seem like the the way you. This episode is obsessed with two things: putting weirdly like realistic human and cat elements in, and like impaling or zapping things through people's heads. Yeah, like what's what's next? Like Sephiroth comes out of nowhere and impales SpongeBob on his big sword, oh, like he did to Mario. <laughs> SpongeBob gets up and he just says, "Well, Mother always said, don't run with the broom," and that's the end of that. It's not even a joke. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you, man. I I, I don't know if you can hear, but my throat is starting to get hoarse. So I'm going to try and just go through this, man. Um, I'm all out of boomer (laughs) drink. I got to go. I got to push. I I misspelled Gary as gay. (laughs) Gay. (laughs) That's all I'm looking at now. Um, Lol, funny word. Uh, fine. Uh, so SpongeBob comes in with like some sort of like contraption that has a scraper on the end. So finally, uh, he uses a scraper to peel him off the ceiling. Gay accidentally bites him going for the ball. We've all been there. <laughs> uh huh. Um, <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> so then SpongeBob gasps because he thinks he got bit by Gary being defensive when it was actually just him just trying to get at the chew toy again. And Spongebob is like, well, Gary, you have a choice. It's either me or the chew toy. And you see, you start to hear, like, the chewing, the the squeak (laughs) before he even (laughs) finishes that sentence. Aw. Oh, my God. So Spongebob (laughs) leaves the house with two luggage bags and just says, well, I'm going. And then the door closes. That's not how pets work. Huh? That's not how pets work. No, it's (laughs) not. Leave it's his house now. <laughs> and he just goes, You still well, gotta take care of them. Well, I hope you two live a happy life together. Door closes. You just hear SpongeBob wailing. And <laughs> Gary oh apathetically God. just squeaking the toy. Jeez. Later, 
Gary is uh, watching TV with the ball uh, sitting on uh, the chair and he gets hungry. So he goes into the kitchen, starts looking for SpongeBob. He starts carrying his food bowl around the house, meowing for him. He has a little like tiny thought bubble of like SpongeBob, but now instead of like all the stuff that he was saying, it's just him saying, Mammy, 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 and yeah. <laughs> like te- <Classic>. tearfully <laughs> saying gibberish. <laughs> and, and, wow. and Gary starts crying like he also understands what Spongebob was saying. <laughs> so then he goes, slithers towards the door like he's going to leave, and the ball rolls in front of him like he's stopping him. Sinister! Again! It is That's very sinister. weird. What the hell? I just... The, the next note I have here is, they fight? <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, so Gary, like, bites down on the ball... And you see the ball, like, wiggle a little bit in his mouth. He breaks free. He, and then, I don't know why I'm saying he, like, it's, the ball is alive. But the ball ricochets itself, bounces off the wall, and into Gary's eye. It gives him a black eye. And they, yeah, oh so, then, so then Gary's like, meow. And he, he grabs the ball, slithers into the kitchen, puts it in the blender. Is this, like, Ball and Gary, is this supposed to be, like, some kind of, like, horrifying domestic squabble where you should call the police? Yeah, this episode feels Snyder Cut length. Ugh, it's so bizarre, because I'm, I'm just, it's, it's coming back. Um, <laughs> he puts it in the blender. You see, we cut to, like, a hyper-realistic painting <laughs> of the ball inside the blender. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a hyper-realistic painting of the ball in the blender. I don't know why it's there. This is a fucking creepy past. <laughs> it's just there. This seems... This, this has gotten so bizarre. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't, like, just have some kind of, like, monster energy-induced I don't know if this is a Nicholas a Payman projected a horror <laughs> nightmare that I had because of sleep deprivation... But fuck it. I put notes in. I'm reading them back. I, I I feel like that's why Nicholas Withers barely appears in Patrick Man because cool, he was pouring all of his like dark energies <laughs> into, into this. twisting the opposite episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, my sleep paralysis demon is giving oh, me hyper realistic paintings of a ball in a blender. It was Nicholas Withers. Yeah, Nicholas the whole Withers was time. in the toy. It cracks open and he hatches like an egg. The toy was played by Nicholas Withers. He was number one. <laughs> so, so what happens next, Lex? So, so Gary, you know, tries to puree the ball. It doesn't work. It, it, uh. Bounces around so much that it breaks through the blender and it, it starts, like, just bouncing all over the house, destroying things. And I forget exactly what happens, but a fire starts. And... <laughs> oh my god! And Gary is just sort Magic of like... man, save us! Gary is just sort of like in the madness, madness of the ball, just like ricocheting off of everything in the house. Just kind of slithers out. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't hit him on the way out, like, that kind of thing. This feels like some, like, Amityville horror shit. This is like the fall of the House of Usher. Like, this is some real scary shit. The Hall and House of Square Pants. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So we cut to um, where SpongeBob is in all of this. And he has tucked himself underneath a bus stop bench that has, like, a chum bucket advertisement on it. So he's homeless now. Why? Yeah. Why would he? What? No, just take the, the take the toy away from your pet. He tried that. What is this? <laughs> Why would it come to this? He's sleeping under a bus stop, and there's an advertisement for the chum bucket that just says "Eat Chum," and Plankton lying on top of it like a uh, Fabio on a bear rug. <laughs> like, <laughs> what you thinking, Bao? That's messed up. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. I'm I'm looking at my notes, and it, I got really tired, <laughs> but. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm missing a lot of details and I'm going to have to reach into my brain. But um, Spongebob is just kind of like in the fetal position underneath the bus stop being like, well, this is my life now. I'm homeless. I'm petless. And uh, I, I don't have a friend. Whatever. Um, and then you see like a teeny mm-hmm. tiny little worm pop out of the uh, ground. And he's like, 
You'll be my friend, right, little nematode? And the nematode starts crawling on him. Uh, crawls up into his shirt sleeve. And he's, and he's just like, ooh, that tickles. And then you see the nematode pop back out, stealing his wallet, and crawls away. <laughs> and, oh, my oh my god. And Spongebob is just, well, I'm glad I canceled all my credit cards. <laughs> that, is a, <laughs> that is a fucking brilliant callback. Yep, oh my god. That's, that's the payoff. <laughs> so wait, is Spongebob now homeless without any money? <laughs> Possibly. But he has no access to his bank account because a no nematode to fucking savings. mugged him. <laughs> oh my god! With friendship, this ball has taken everything from SpongeBob. <laughs> this ball is living my life. When will this nightmare end? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so SpongeBob hears a meow, and Gary is sitting on the bench, and SpongeBob is like, "Oh wait, oh. uh, how are you and your?" ball friend getting along or you know whatever he says i don't i didn't put it down <laughs> uh gary just licks his face and he's just like i want to be it's in that sort of like no i want i want you back and spongebob is mm. just like all you know heart warmed and uh hugs gary uh it, it the, hmm. so uh, spongebob hugs him so hard that one of gary's eye stalks pops through to the other side of spongebob's head but what is it with impalement in this? And Spongebob says something to the effect of, Oh, see? Now we're closer than ever. <laughs> we're like brothers. Only we're like brothers, brothers only Gary. Closer. Only closer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And so uh, it pans out. Uh, you know, they stop hugging. Uh, Gary gets his eye stalk back. Pulls out. And you see Sp Spongebob is only like a few, like, mo like a... What's the word for it? My brain is working overdrive right now. He's, he's down the street from his house. Okay. He's at a bus stop down the street from uh. his house. You see that a fire truck has arrived at the house, and the house, like, explodes in fire. Oh, God. And you see the ball following the explosion and lands right by them. And SpongeBob is like, oh, Gary, look, it's your ball again. And Gary hisses with, like, red eyes at the ball. And the episode ends. The, ep the episode ends? Yeah. It, it, that's where it ends. Oh. I genuinely admire their ability to just have that much stuff in 11 minutes. That felt like a feature-length movie. <laughs> My throat has run a mile. <laughs> I feel like this ball was the most dangerous threat that SpongeBob ever experienced. Yeah. I have Jesus Christ. Tried to take his home, his family, his pet, it, like everything. Yeah, it's a Jeez. home wrecker. Home wrecking yeah. ball. No, genuinely, it like that, that that episode was clearly impactful because just your description of it like stirred up weirdly traumatic cartoon <laughs> memories <laughs> from us. Exactly. I hope this doesn't become a trend of like every time I'm on this show, I bring up something just really traumatic. There is just mine left. Yep. Can I go for one more bathroom break? And Lexi, do you want to grab a glass of water for your throat? Because yes. <laughs> you are going to need... Like, the two of you are going to need everything you've got for this last episode. Oh, I will I will refill my water bottle as well. Yeah, Alright, like sweet. See so you on a sec. Keep here. recording. Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. This is the most, like, jam-packed recording I think we've ever had. I know, I feel so sorry for future you that has to edit this. Uh, it, it, it'll take a while, but that's okay. I think the final product will be worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying... My goodness, I'm still though. trying to think of, like, what episode... What, like, TV show thing has left me just traumatized or just viscerally afraid. Welcome back. I think the thing is, I think the thing is, yours, Lexi, might have been house fancy. <laughs> so like, we've been over it. We've covered it. Yeah, I mean, it. It. I mean, it didn't leave me with like any sort of like dread. It just left me with a fear of anything happening to my fingernails. Mm. Yeah, that there is a difference between so, disgust and fear. And it, it, it's, it's true. It's true. It. It spurred a phobia. <laughs> I'll say that. Yeah. If we're going by inside out rules, then yeah, disgust and fear are two separate characters. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Is everyone ready for the final one? No, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess, I suppose this is all ever be, mm -hmm. yeah. The thing is, 
This, I'm about to make a lofty statement. This is the worst episode of Spongebob I have ever seen. Oh boy. <laughs> oh man. Oh like, man. So, people who have made it this far into this episode of Spongebob Boys, you're in for a real treat. We're in the eighth tier of the... here comes the real shit. Spongebob uh, iceberg, I guess. Yeah, no, genuinely, this is an episode where if I, like, the second I tell you the title... If you have any knowledge of this, any knowledge, you will feel your fucking toes curl. Oh no. Mm. So, the final episode I have for you two poor fuckers today is a little episode called Squid Baby. I've never seen this episode. I already want to die. I've (laughs) never... I've never heard of this episode, but that that name alone makes me, like, breathe heavily. So, much like Lexi did, uh, part of this is going to be me telling the story, and part of it, just to illustrate my mental state as this was actually going on, is going to be reading what was in my notes. Mm -hmm. And, for context, at the very top of my notes here, I've written, Squid Baby, colon, fucking kill me. Oh my god. Oh no. (sighs) Like, this is an episode that, like, I know I've said this kind of jokingly in previous things. This is an episode that I would legitimately swear exists purely to fulfill the, like, writer's terrifying fucking fetish. I'm not looking forward to hearing it. (laughs) I am so glad that I always answer... The question, are you ready, with no. Because yeah. this has already proven to me that I'm not ready. <laughs> I don't think there's anything that could prepare us for this. Yeah, I think I may be learning a lesson about how not to be so eager when I like say that I'm ready to like bring it on. <laughs> yeah, no, genuinely, because the thing is, as I recount some of this to you, you're gonna think I've made it up. Like, genuinely, like... But I swear to God, every single detail I impart to you was actually in an episode of Spongebob Squarepants that I watched today called Squid Baby. I Mm. really hate that title. Let us begin. It starts off with Squidward having like a bubble bath as like he has his shower like lightly spritzing him. He's listening to like a relaxation tape. It's Tom Kenny on the tape as well. (laughs) And he is, like, imagining himself in, like, a kind of extravagant, like, sort of ancient Greek-style, like, hot spring bath. You know, like, stone pillars, like, built into the side of a mountainside, that kind of thing. Mm. And Mm. there are these two, like, fluttering clams, because, you know, clams are birds. Mm -hmm. And then the clams near him start, like, giggling in Spongebob and Patrick's voice. Mm Mm-hmm. To kind of represent uh, yep. them, like, stirring him from his, like, state of sereneness. Everything's kind of okay at this moment. Yeah, this exact scene has happened before, uh, to some extent. This is the last moment where things are okay. Oh, boy. So, uh, okay. Squidward gets out of the bath, and he walks over to the window, and he opens it, and SpongeBob and Patrick are sitting outside his home, playing with baby toys. Not children's toys... Baby toys, like rattles and blankets. And they're rolling around. And, like, Patrick, like, shakes a rattle with his feet and goes, How do you like that, baby? And they're, like, calling each other baby (laughs) as they play with these toys. There's, like, this extended scene where, like, Patrick is, like, sucking on a pacifier, rendered in, like, uncomfortable detail. This is very uncomfortable. And I have written in notes here... Acting like babies, question mark, question mark, question mark, hyphen, all caps, fetish, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. The two of them begin to, like, loudly, like, cry. Squidward, like, yells his classic, like, what are you two up to? And Spongebob is like, oh, we found all of, like, my uh, baby toys in my attic, and we're playing with them. And as Meg pointed out, hmm? 
why would yeah yeah why would his baby toys be in his attic <laughs> when it's clearly not the house that like he grew up in he 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 doesn't live in the house that his parents raised him in why would his why would he move his baby toys <laughs> Here, into his adult here's home? my question <laughs> would it be more or less creepy if spongebob said my parents let me keep my old baby toys Either, <laughs> both are like, equally creepy. Like, yeah, like, well, like the th- like the thing is, like, don't like parents usually like sell off that shit to like or give it to like you know other people who are like new parents. Like, I I can't remember the last time I saw a rattle, let alone like knew where one was relative to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So it's oh, it's gonna get so fucking bad. All right. So Squidward goes outside. He's wearing like a, like a towel turban on his head, you know, like when you t- mm-hmm. <laughs> need to keep your hair in place, Squidward. <laughs> oh my god! And wow, Squidward. And he's got like a cluster of bubbles hiding his the paninus, which, as Meg pointed out, is weird <laughs> because pobis. he, he yeah, his pobis, <laughs> babona. Oh my god! Um, but it's weird because Squidward doesn't wear trousers anyway. No, but he has had uh, bubbles censor his pobis before. Oh, yeah, like in the, uh, have you finished those errands? Yeah. Well, what's super weird is that, like, Squidward doesn't wear pants, but there's that line. It's, like, the second to last line in the SpongeBob movie where it's like, oh, uh, I, I was just going to tell you, Squidward, that your fly is down. And it's like, what fly? <laughs> what fly? <laughs> what fly? He wears no pants! Let's be honest, we're all just trying to bide our time because we know bad things are about to happen. So Squidward comes down and chastises them for uh, acting like babies. And <laughs> as he's walking away, Squidward steps on a toy car. Oh no. And he stumbles backwards and he hits his head so hard on his like mailbox that his head like deforms around it. And then oh, no. he falls to the ground and the top of his head swells up and like his nose kind of shrinks into his head. So we've got this naked Squidward with like an abnormally swollen head. So he like, there's a number of things he looks like. He looks like, do you know those like Area 51 photos that Riley probably has printouts <laughs> of, of like an autopsy on the greys. Yeah. But, but most specifically, sorry, go on, let's I, see. I'm thinking of that face that he makes when um, he broke into the like Krabby Patty vault and SpongeBob is there looking for him. Like he's that a-, a little bit, but again, you have to understand, his head swells to, like, freakish proportions. Like, the other thing... It's just that he looks like an alien, because his nose also shrinks. Mm. Well, the thing that he looks the most like is, have you guys seen, it's fucking old now, but have you guys seen the old uh, Aphex Twin music video, Rubber Johnny? Oh, God! He looks exactly Whoa, that's like a that. fucking callback. Yeah, he looks exactly like fucking Rubber Johnny. No. Wow. And okay. he has been given brain damage to the point that he is like babbling and whining like a baby. He's regressed. Yeah, he's age regressed. No. No! Is... Oh, that's where I thought it was going to go, but I really wish it didn't. So, they say we need to pick him up and take him to a hospital. And they pick him up. And a running thing in this episode is they keep, like, dropping his head and it, like, bashes against shit. I don't like that. So, cut to him in a hospital bed and the doctor's like, oh, you know, this is, a like, a standard thing. Uh, he's, like, regressed to a baby-like state. But it's totally fine. You just have to take care of him and make sure he doesn't receive too many blows to the head, or it could become permanent. Uh, I oh, that's oh, this no, 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 no. I don't like this because like the thing would be like oh well, okay, doctor, and then they proceed to do the opposite of what he says, yeah. and it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. But in this case, it can't be fun. That's just like. Please don't do this. Yeah, they're effectively like, hey, just make sure that you don't abuse this disabled man. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. And uh, this is something that I wrote in my notes. He, oh yeah, I wrote uh, in parenthesis, mustn't receive any blows to the head, dash, so he will. 
Is this what I wrote <laughs> yeah. down? But then, yeah. as the doctor picks him up and carries him over to SpongeBob and Patrick, I'll put it exactly how my notes put it. All caps. Diaper. Ah! He has a fucking mm. diaper. Oh, no. It is Squidward, adult man, head swollen with brain damage, in a diaper, acting like a baby. I hate that. I hate everything about this. And SpongeBob and Patrick need to ca- take care of him. We've been SpongeBob boying for three hours. <laughs> Nothing feels real anymore, does uh, it? <laughs> I, I myself am becoming brain dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to will like reactions, and I, I I'm just, <laughs> I'm so b- head empty right now. <laughs> Trust me, you'll get some reactions. Uh, Things are going to happen. It, it, it feels like for me, it's like it's almost the opposite of brain empty. It feels like brain too full. Brain screaming. Brain inverted into other brain. I just, attempted to make the hurt me more daddy meme and i'm just like no that is not what i want right now <laughs> yeah because my to make stop. Kept hurt, saying, hurt me hurt me less yeah, please leave Mick me kept alone saying that this is like a strange gay spongebob version of like the ddlg type shit yeah it's no longer hurt me daddy it's lighter mama they take him home and naturally they just keep like bashing his big bulbous head against things <sighs> and he keeps like bawling and crying every time it. they do. Uh, I'm bawling and crying. So I, I wrote down here in the notes, pitch meeting. What if Squidward became a baby and we beat the fuck out of him? Because the, the thing that came to me is the fact that like, imagine how many people a SpongeBob episode has to go through before it's approved. I'm so glad that we w- saved this for last, because I don't, I don't think there would be anything that either of us... <laughs> this would have drained the life force out of me <laughs> yeah. if I had heard it earlier. Exactly. This is the thing, like, what I kept thinking as I listened to this is, like, you guys would justifiably shut it down so quickly if I was like, hey guys, so I have this new Let's Is Morgue episode idea. So, <laughs> Riley gets brain damage, and... They become a baby for an episode. God. Like, you guys would immediately just be like, what Henry, the fucking what are fuck you are you talking about? Stop. You know, exactly. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're not doing this. Are you on crack? Like, what the, what the Have fuck? Have you fully like, imbued is... Florida man into your being? Like, th- this is a meth thought. Like, this is not a, like, a viable episode concept. Yeah, I have one question. Who put this vomit in my mouth? <laughs> Speaking of, there's this bit where they're trying to feed him, like, mushy baby food. Uh. And he, like, spits it and, like, pushes it all onto Spongebob's face. And Patrick licks it off Spongebob's face. Hmm. There's been a lot of bad touch in this episode. The the doctor should not have let him leave the hospital. (laughs) The doctor should have taken... These two are not... These two are not, like, his guardians. They can't... They're not caretakers. They can't protect him. Squidward is, like, throughout this, like, drooling and, like, semi-comatose at points. Squidward's in the fucking, like, sunken place right now. (laughs) Christ. Squidward is living his, like, fucking Johnny Got His Gun worst life in this moment. And so there's this bit where he, like, crawls outside and... The trucker, the like, come on, old blue trucker in his fucking 18 wheeler is driving towards Squidward on the road. And Patrick runs out and lifts up a section of the road, like pulls it up. So it's a ramp. So the truck just like flies off into the air. (sighs) So it doesn't hit baby Squidward. I feel like Squidward was, like, trying to get run over by a truck because <laughs> Kill me. the thought of continuing in such a way would have been too much for him. But when he drops the road back down, it lands on baby Squidward's head. <sighs> so anyway, we, we then get a montage of Spongebob and Patrick, like, sharing the parenting duties and slowly being emotionally worn down as baby Squidward incessantly cries. I wrote down on here, this is Rockabye Bivalve for perverts. Like, it's it's just like, it's just 
concepts that have kind of been done in earlier episodes, like, hey, what if SpongeBob and Patrick had to, like, try, like, a parenting dynamic? It was like, what if that, but, like, it had no charm and it was creepy as fuck? This legit just feels like something out of, like, fucking Elsa Gate, except for yeah. like SpongeBob. Like, this feels like a weird, like, backwoods Flash game that you play, and it's like, Squidward's a baby! See if you can keep him from getting permanent concussions! Yeah, like, well, we joked in last episode that, like, zombie Jeffrey Epstein is pulling the strings, and, like, mm -hmm. this is evidence of that. The island that is directly above Bikini Bottom is that fucking <laughs> scary Jeffrey island Epstein's with the temple. Epstein's island! <laughs> yeah. Fucking God damn it. Epstein Island. God fucking damn I it. I hate it. You're gonna hate <sighs> it more. So anyway, they cage him in, like, a bamboo cage, like a fucking, like, Vietnam War prisoner. Oh my God. Like, they've got baby Squidward, like, fucking John McCain in here. God, we haven't gotten enough horrifying fetishes. No, like, it, it just feels like this... Here comes the prisoner of war fetish. No, it, it genuinely just feels like this is every, like, awful nightmare fetish of these authors who I can't name for reasons. This is a crime. And, like, more, like, weird mess stuff happens, which also is, like, like the mess kink. I think that's a thing. Oh, no. Please. I was... Mentally begging for that uh, to uh, not be a- Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I- I am going to die! I'm going Wait. to die! I- So I th thought- th Ooh, this is- mm, I don't know if you guys I watch Justin Wang, but he yeah. did a video- <laughs> This messy puppy! Oh! Let's not get into that. Uh, I'm just thinking about that. So I thought, this can't get any worse. And then, <laughs> smash cut to Mr. Krabs. Oh, no. No! And he's like, no! Get him away! <laughs> no! Mr. Krabs will do nothing but harm! And he's like, oh, no! SpongeBob and Squidward are late for work. And SpongeBob and Patrick arrive. SpongeBob is wearing Squidward as a backpack. Just this, like, big bulbous head and, like, these limp tentacles. Just this otherwise, like, naked man in a fucking diaper. Like, just babbling like a baby. And, oh, again, he keeps bonking his head, and Mr. Krabs like, oh, and they're like, look, he's brain damaged, we need to take care of him. And Mr. Krabs like, I don't care, put him to work. <laughs> Holy fuck. Mr. Krabs, oh. so Spongebob was like, okay, I'll put Squidward on this high seat at the cashier, and he duct tapes him in place, which, again, I think is another thing. Like, fucking like, duct tape mummification bondage. Anyway. Uh, oh, uh, god uh, damn it. Uh, 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 uh. So, so all of these like customers start turning up, and like a guy says, "Hey, can I have this crab patty?" And like puts his hand out with money in it, and Squidward starts sucking his hand. And Hitting then... three hours into uh, SpongeBob now, Boys so now we're... has really just been the final twist in the <laughs> Hellraiser cube, isn't it? Yeah, welcome yeah, to Heaven so... Bound. Uh, now we're getting into like now we're getting into like Joe Biden like finger sucking like <laughs> damn it. <laughs> and I don't know what this is supposed to Let be. Let me tell you, if any it. of these characters had hair, someone would sniff it. Anyway, so <sighs> So the guy pulls his hand away, so Squidward sucks his head instead, and then this guy comes to the front of the queue and like Squidward like draws on his face. And the guy walks away and he goes, my face, also my leg, but my face, and then walks away and it's like, no, you've not fucking earned that. No. You can't make he that joke in your, that? like, Squidward, he... yeah, you can't make your Squidward age regression. <sighs> Mess kink. They're just, they're just trying to remind you that it's, it's a Spongebob <laughs> episode and not a fan fiction. Yeah, the, 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 just to remind you guys, this is Spongebob and not some fucking nightmare thing that you found on clips for sale. Like, this so, is... So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Moments like this in fucking shows are what tells me that, like, there is no fucking line that separates fan fiction from, like, canon. There is no fucking line. Because the only difference is, like, whether or not something is, like, a well-told story or professional. This being an actual canonical Spongebob, like, episode, it, 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 it's like, there is, there is nothing. There, yeah. like, there is, this, this 
like fucking I, I I am at a loss for words. Do you remember what uh, season this is from? Uh, this I believe is so. Is the it's either. <laughs> Oh no! So it's either season nine or season eleven, oh, because no. the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> so it's from season nine eleven. <laughs> Feels like it, doesn't it? But like yeah. the thing is, this wasn't the episode my random number generator picked. I was looking for season ten, but what the fucking like torrent website that I shan't name that I found this on had for season ten. Wasn't what Wikipedia had. So I said, fuck it. Well, just whatever I click now will be the one. And Squid Baby came up on the screen. And I was like, no. Oh, God. We're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. All right, so. (sighs) So now Squidward does shit his pants. (laughs) And he has. Now he does. So he has, like, a, a visibly lumpy diaper with stink lines. Oh, it, it hurts. The the thing is, as much as somebody who made this is probably getting off on this, I am glad of the small mercy that he was wearing a diaper, because I don't want to see, like, squid shit live, like, in front of everyone. Squid happens. Yeah, squid happens. He squids his pants. I um, hate that. Fuck. That is no <laughs> longer oh, happening. <laughs> so anyway, SpongeBob uh, like has to go and change him somewhere, and he keeps trying different places, but everywhere he takes him, he just bashes his head on something. You know what was wrong with the the episode where SpongeBob and Patrick are taking care of? A scout. Yeah, that's Rockabye Bivalve. That's the good one. Like I said, this is Rockabye Bivalve for people who should be in prison. <laughs> this is not. The, the thing is, this, this is, is Jeffrey not Epstein even a baby. presents Rockabye Bivalve. This is th- like this. The thing is, the condition that Squidward has, this horrifying concussion, should not be that he should be treated exactly like a baby. In no way... They just decided early on, because Spongebob and Patrick were playing with baby toys, that, oh, they've just got babies on the brain. Let's just treat this man who, through completely unrelated circumstances, got a horrifying concussion as if he's a baby. It'll be fun! Yeah, they just... They were told to take care of him, not to treat him like a literal baby. They, they They just don't know where, like, the concern for their neighbor and friend begins and where their fucking pretend baby time ends. I'm about to ruin both your guys' days even more. I'm afraid, Uh. I'm afraid that when the doctor hands him over, he says, you've got a bouncing baby boy. There is no God. <laughs> I want a refund on my life. <laughs> the universe is a lie. <laughs> so anyway, we're almost over. People keep calling him a poopy baby. Happiness is sadness ignored. <laughs> People keep calling him a poopy baby. <laughs> Their words, not mine. I'm fucking dead. I... <laughs> I, there's there's no other like mouth sound that I can make that can accurately just portray the decay in my soul. <laughs> the more that is said about this, it just doesn't end. <laughs> Wait, I, I think I have one I think I have one sound that works here. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the fucking sound. All right, so there is one funny joke in it, literally one, and it's like even the funniness of that is just diminished by the nightmares around it. SpongeBob is trying to like change his like diaper on like, like the the sauce island. You know that bit in every restaurant where you just go to like get sauces and like napkins and shit. Mm-hmm. The one that only exists sometimes in the Krusty Krab, yeah. Exactly. Um... <laughs> and the lady's like, hey, I'm trying to get my ketchup here. And Mr. Krabs goes, what the, what, like, what the heck are you do, like, doing this, uh, like, out here where the customers are? 
Go change him in the back where the food is prepared. <laughs> what? It's when Mr. Krabs appears and goes, What are you doing, motherfuckers? <laughs> he just goes full Moya Mortal. Yeah. You motherfuckers. So, SpongeBob <laughs> takes him the into the kitchen. Where there's usually a yeah. changing station. I. I quit. So, SpongeBob takes him into the kitchen. And bangs his head on a bunch of things until finally Squidward is dropped in front of the ice box and a bunch of ice cubes fall out onto his head and that reduces the swelling and he becomes normal again and he stands up and he's like, what was happening? And like Spongebob is like, oh, I was about to change you. And someone goes, what's going on? Why am I wearing this? Is this... And he opens it up with kind of like a squelch sound. And then it's like, oh! And like his diaper, I mean. And then he uh, he goes to leave. I know what Thank you meant. for clarifying. <laughs> he, goes, he goes to leave. No, no room for misinterpretation there. He, 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 he goes to leave and then he walks back and he says, you don't tell anyone about this. Ever. We never speak of this again. And Squidward leaves, and Spongebob sighs, smiles, and says, Kids, they grow up so fast. Cut to black. (laughs) This made me beg for Nicholas Withers. I... I have no words. Henry... How much? How much does it cost to buy a soul on the black market? Because I need a replacement. <laughs> Is it possible to unhear things? Is it? It. I. I. I l- listen. Listen. I like. I. I feel like I have. I am stronger for having heard this, but I don't know that my form can last through it. Can you please? Can I make one request of the the two of you? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Just so you know what I meant. Just Google. Never speak just, of this. just Google Squid Baby, real quick. Just, just look at this fucking thing. The oh. Squid Baby. I didn't put SpongeBob, and it showed me baby squids. Oh, oh. that's actually wholesome. <laughs> Those are probably nicer. No, they're they definitely are. nicer. Yeah. Oh no! Oh! Now, if you think hearing my description and looking at that picture. Is bad. Imagine watching it. Okay, so, um, everyone, we do this show <laughs> so that you don't have to watch SpongeBob. Yeah. We are, we are like, we. Uh, I implore you. This is how broken I am just from hearing about Squid Baby. I would never watch it. Nobody should. Yeah. Don't. D- d- don't. Don't. Do it. Don't. So, uh... D- don't. Before we... Don't. Before we don't. go... Don't. Don't do it. Before we go, don't uh... Any closing thoughts? Lexi? <laughs> um... Hmm. <laughs> Big thing. I think I've said all I want to on this. Yeah. Throughout. Um... But just for the sake of closure, yeah, that's it.